everyone. Welcome to the first Chrono Speedruns Relay Race. We have three teams of nine very, very talented runners. Uh, this is the first time the community has come together for something like this. So I am Dai Nuatari. Um, I'll be one of the Radical Dreamer runs. Uh, for Chrono Trigger, we have Keat Ketchum on Team Slash. We have Red Slash on Team Ozzy. Kind of missed a little bit of a pun joke, but we'll run with it. And then we have Halation 1 on Team Flea. Your commentators will be Silent Martyr and Triton GL. Uh, if anyone else wants to say anything. Um, sure. Yeah, my name is uh, El Granjeri, part of the Chrono Trigger community. I'll be running Radical Dreamers. Uh, as Dain said, this is the first time we've done the Chrono Relay. I hope you, I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. And you know, if if this goes well, then you can expect to see many more of these uh, in the future. Hopefully, with more teams, more runners. No new games because you know that's not going to happen. But hey. <laughs> This is Andy W three three two one. I'll be running Chrono Cross, and uh, just to kind of piggyback off what everyone said, uh, this has been way overdue for happening. So I'm very excited that uh, today we can present the first ever Chrono Trilogy relay. So and, are we uh, go ahead, Dan. Sorry, Andy. Go ahead. Uh, I'm done. So the order will be, of course, Chrono Trigger. Um, Radical Dreamers, which you can use exclamation point RD in chat to find out more about it. Um, it's a text-based adventure, and then we're finishing off with the good old Chrono Cross. So, as in a relay fashion, we're going to start all the teams at the same time, and whichever team gets through all three games first is the winner, and they get the arbitrary point on an artificial leaderboard, which we can hold over people's head for the next year. So I hope everyone's all prepped and ready. Uh, this should be probably about 13, 14 hours, maybe a little less, depending on how the runs decide to treat everyone. Yep, uh, we're just finishing uh, prepping up. Have our runners and commentary standing by. So uh, just give us a moment, please, and uh, we'll get this thing going. Uh, yes, we forgot. Chrono Trigger will be the any percent no Labo shell skip. You guys can use the exclamation point no LSS for further information. If not, I'm pretty sure uh, Silent and Trenton can definitely fill you guys in better than I can. So with that being said, we'll get the race started very shortly. Thank you everyone for tuning in and hopefully you enjoy yourself. Silent, I think that was our cue. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Chrono Relay, where we are excited to start off with one of the greatest games of all time, of course, Chrono Trigger. I'm hyped for this. How about you, Silent? Oh, I couldn't be more hype. As Andy said, this is long overdue. This is an amazing community full of really talented players, and we we really need to show the full community of Twitch what great runners there are and what great games these are to run and it looks like we're uh, getting started chad i hope you're feeling pretty hyped too we have some fantastic runners as you said coming into today halation second on this leaderboard red slash third they're separated by just a minute keep catch them is just a little bit behind that seventh place but uh you know i'm feeling the pb hype today are you somebody got a pb that'd be pretty dope i would enjoy a thorough pb for sure um I feel like Radical Dreamers might be the more PB fresh since that's the the run with the least amount of people running it. And, you know, it's only been running for a few, not not even two years, really, since it's really taken off as a run. But Chrono Trigger PBs are always fresh, so they would be welcome as well. All these type we are uh, setting up very early with these controls. They want to get the tech speed up. They're going to be manipulating the battle speed throughout. And uh, what else is important to them in this early game? 
Well, you have the option of switching your control scheme, scheme around for an upcoming skip that we're going to be doing in the future. Uh, literally, the future, 2300. I'll explain that when we get there, but that's pretty much the only real uh, unusual variants you'll have at the beginning of the run. Everything else is pretty simple. You know, you wake up, you make everybody's name one uh, letter, uh, and, you know, just start running. Uh, there's also, of course, the money you can get from Mom. If you're so inclined, she'll give you the allowance. The fair sequence, of course, there's spoilers we won't go into, but the order in which you do some of these actions is very important. To set us up for future time saves, you have to go grab that pendant first, which is why you see that instead of talking to Marley right away. Yeah, we want to go for being bad. Uh, guilty is faster than not guilty in the uh, court sequence. So we're looking to do whatever we can to get Chrono to be locked up. It's about eight seconds faster, if I remember correctly, um, between the differences. But yeah, uh, everybody seems to be rolling through. No problems. Oh, anybody going to try candy skip? Does not. No, no. Oh, I think ah. everybody did a loose try for Ooh. it. Keep, keep got close. But yeah, the uh, candy skip is something that is done in the new game plus run, but it's, uh, it's something you could also do here. Uh, if uh, I will, I, I would have explained it if they got it, but, uh, it's, it's nothing very important. It's just swag. It's all swag. And who doesn't love swag? We all love swag. So one of the very important things to note when you're trying to speed run this game is positioning is going to be very important throughout. Where you stand, how you walk, all this affects the uh, trigger hit boxes. So there'll be a scene box that triggers exactly at this spot. There'll be an encounter that'll trigger if you step on this square. And our runners are going to have to be very careful in how they move to avoid those Sometimes they'll have more fun with it than others. But meanwhile, we of course have the uh, introduction part, and it feels like it takes a good few minutes before you even really start the game when you're speed running it. But, uh, get all the initial dialogue, the teleport, all that fun stuff. Yeah, thankfully it's not too bad. You know, it's not like Super Mario Sunshine or anything that rough where we gotta wait like 10-15 minutes before we can get going. But it's a little bit. I mean, it's not, not too bad for RPG, I don't think for how long it takes you to get into actual gameplay, so to speak. Well, as far as the just some random factoids on our runners, uh, Key Ketchum is working on actually being able to run all three. So <laughs> that'll be a future self-marathon. And uh, Lation has actually been on a fun project lately working on save corruption. That's not part of this run at all, but uh, they are working on some fun stuff with that. Oh, yeah, no. If you're all about, like, crazy, just, like, cracking the game wide open and doing un all sorts of unintended things, like the what what Halation and others are working on with the save corruption stuff is so cool and so interesting, and it's, like, it's really neat because it can... it, it The opportunities are limitless with... Uh, what what can what can be done, but what ends up working out, we'll see. You have to stick around in the community to find out. And when it comes to Red Slash, I mean, if you've been around the community at all, you know Red Slash is a major contributor on a lot of fronts. Like I, I like to say, Red Sl Red Slash is the entity of the Chrono Trigger community. Um, you know, like I, I feel like no matter what time of the day it is, they're doing something Chrono series related. Whether it's like streaming or working on tech or just like looking at code, like just it's it's amazing. It's amazing every time. It's it's really cool. We have our first fight. Now, one of the things our runners did was switch over to uh, cursor memory so that they're able to use a different button to command and then more quickly enter text or items as they need to. Yeah, that's the general RPG that ha if you know if an RPG lets you, you're gonna want to do memory cursor kind of stuff. It's so it's so helpful. It makes it it makes your muscle memory that much easier. You don't have to think about button input presses. You can just do what you have to do. And it looks like encounter skip, known as bird skip, and it's a question of getting Chrono's toe right over the exact spot, then going up, and you skip the fight. It's 
not the most precise thing in the game by any means, but it's pretty precise. Yeah, you have, uh, what is it, three pixels to work with there? Maybe four? It's it's a very small window that you have to be able to, like, slip up and around the bridge without hitting the trigger. Because how this game works is, instead of having random encounters, most of the encounters are triggered by, uh, basically, buttons on the floor. And when you walk over these buttons, so to speak, then it triggers the encounter. So if you can get your sprite to go around the triggers entirely, then you'll skip the encounter. Uh, most of the encounters aren't intended to be skipped, but, you know, the ones that you can still get around, obviously we're going to try it. Oh, the so name of the game very is important to pick up there with that power glove. Uh, they're going to be very precise, of course, with what treasures they open, but that's going to set up the equipment glitch that we'll be seeing in a little while. Yeah, which is pretty much what allows us to beat the game as early as we do. Um, the elixir glitch also helps with that, but we would never be able to get to the end game without the unequipped glitch. It would the, this run would be hours longer, m more than more than likely hours longer without it. Of course, storyline wise, we find out that we're actually in the past. Marley has been confused with her ancestor. We went to talk with her, and uh, nothing could possibly go wrong here. And there's no way we could be blamed for this, right? Definitely not. Look, messing with time, nothing ever goes wrong, okay? That's what I've learned. Well, you know what I think we need right now is a healthy dose of science. We need a totally accurate biology lesson. Yes. <laughs> oh, great, Luke is here. Perfect. She can tell us all about it. When I think science, I think Luca. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, you're not thinking Ayla, that's for sure. Well, I mean, she would be an expert on laws of motion. Hit stuff, stuff go far. <laughs> the the motion of Smash. Exactly. Oh boy, could you imagine her in Smash? She'd wreck everything. Uh, yeah, no, I do. I imagine her in Smash all the time, and then they have Steve, and then I cry. Okay, then. <laughs> So I asked a couple of our runners uh, what some of the memorable moments to them were about this game and what really wrapped them into the uh, key. Talked about a lot of the little things, like going to the future and having them say, healthy, healthy, whatever you want to call it. And uh, for Halation, one of them was just Magus's character in general. And... and uh, quite the depth of that character that unfolds you just in the early half of the game he's just this big bad guy but then you start to find out what was really going on certainly, right. makes, certainly makes him relatable for sure now we're going to do something very important we talked about avoiding fights now we're going to take two of them these are completely avoidable we do not have to have these fights but our runners are going to choose to take them because they want to unlock techs. What are they unlocking, Silent? They're unlocking Fire Whirl, which is a one of the, probably one of the first dual techs you can realistically learn in the speedrun. Uh, it requires fi Fire Toss from Luca and uh, Cyclone from Chrono uh, to have those. So you'll earn those tech points in these two fights, and then at the end of the second battle, we'll have learned the Fire Whirl, which is. I won't say necessary for the upcoming Naga Et fight, but it certainly makes it a lot safer and a lot faster. Especially when you're on the RNG properly, which we haven't really talked about yet, the RNG manipulation um, in this game. It is extremely precise and is very dependent on what you're doing in your combat in terms of both um, the time you take to select your turn your uh, attacks or texts or whatever as well as when in the battle you are selecting them um is a basically the rng works it's a big hex grid and as you do actions in battle that hex grid advances and points on the grid determine what enemies do um this in term this uh, this is both in terms of their movement as well as their attacks like what they choose to do I roll so lets them hit three Naga Ets at once there. That quickly reduces the length of the battle, and then one Flame Toss will end it quite easily. 
Yeah, this fight, because the Nagaets have a t uh, have an attack that's called, uh, I think it's just called slow, but um, they like kiss you and you're, you know, you get the slow status effect and obviously that makes things much worse because then they can stack them on you um, and th this fight can go on and on for a long time if you get too many of those slows on your characters. And, and now we've got... it's saved thanks to Glenn. Yep, we've got everybody's favorite frog. Hello, Glenn. Welcome to the party. For now. For now. Well, it's always for now in this game. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Especially in the, in the speedrun. So the cathedral is a great example of how avoidable the fights can be. We'll see enemies all over, but the one fights we're going to choose to take are very limited. Yeah, you, you know, like, it, there's just no reason to get into any of these encounters. And again, because every encounter has the opportunity to advance the RNG, um, you want to get in as, you know, only the encounters you want to get in. Um, any extra encounter can throw you off RNG and then require, require you know, resets or backup strats, whatever, depending on the situation. For this section, you don't need the RNG because we're going to be, uh, you know, skipping Yakra entirely. Um, and these, the fights that you do get in, in here are not so rough that you'll, you know, die. Um, if they're, if you're off RNG, you'll just lose time. By the way, they are picking up tabs that will help them improve stats. So obviously when we're not leveling up as much, we need stats to help. And tabs are your only, not only source, but your major source of increased speed. So picking those up is going to be important along the way. Yeah, pretty much the only other speed-related boosts are from weapons or accessories, and we don't really see any of those in the speedrun except for Chrono, who gets the uh, Slasher, as well as the Swallow, which both boost speed, uh, plus two and plus three, respectively. So now we've got another fight. This fight goes pretty smoothly, whether you're on the RNG or not, because you're really just flame-whirling the, uh, the Grunts, and then the Diablos just get pretty easily wrecked by the remainder of the people. The RNG just makes Frog get the critical hits on the two Diablos. Yeah, uh, that which... lets him one shot. I mean, take two standard attacks. So yeah. that's saving you rounds of combat. Next room, we're going to be skipping everything. And then very important, we're going to see all sorts of shenanigans with this save point. Yeah, this is the... Th this boss is annoying. So... We're just going to skip him. Like, whatever. This is Yakra. He weighs in at... Oh, I closed that part. Uh, it's like 900-something HP. Loves to counterattack. So how are our runners deal with it? Skip it. Skip it real good. Basically what we do here is the first part of the sequence with what they were doing outside the door is setting up the Save Anywhere glitch. Um... This basically tricks the game into allowing us to save at any point um, by loading a transition at the same time that a character is standing on the save point. If you hear the ding and then you switch into the next room, that means you have save anywhere. Um, it allows you to, as the name says, save anywhere. And then from there, we save numerous times in the room to get past certain trigger points to that lock the characters in place. Once this is done and the characters can move freely during this cutscene, we move in and out of the foreground to close the text boxes as quickly as possible. And then right as Yakra is about to transform, we start moving back again, getting Frog in and out. And then right before the boss battle is supposed to begin, you leave, go as far down as possible without leaving the room. And then the because the game sees that the boss is off the screen, it thinks that the boss is dead. So there you go. Triggers the post-fight cutscene. And then, you know, Yakra's just standing there like, come on, guys, you want to fight? And I'm like, nah, we're good. I'm just going to take the queen leave. Thanks for playing, though. We got other stuff to do today. We got a world to save. Uh, also, they did the unequip there for Luca, so they're gaining plus 10 magic power and 15 magic resistance from that, which is a hidden stat, but 
you'll notice it significantly whenever we're taking magic damage, how much less it is. Meanwhile, let's we've got a princess to save. One would argue that the entity saved her. And that we really didn't have much to do with that. Which is one of my favorite parts about the story in this game, is that the first half of the story, you're not really helping. You're really just kind of experiencing these events in history that have happened, and you're just assisting in the stuff that already had happened. You're not changing anything. Well, we had to go stop Yakra. He wasn't stopped until we got there. But if you think about it, in the OG timeline, Frog would have saved Yakra all by himself because the Queen's obviously saved in the original timeline. A PS little movement here called Frog Gip. If you talk to Frog, you get very hype music, but you also get extra text boxes. We don't want that in a speed run. Yeah, Frog Skip's really hard, though. So GG's to everybody for getting it. That just has so don't far. talk to him and don't run into him. Yeah, just ignore him. He's not there. He's a statue. It's a sad frog statue. And then this is Reverse Bird Skip. This is the... Not exactly the same thing, even though it's in the same place, but they have to use the save anywhere to get past the fight, and they do. Yeah, basically, the save anywhere unloads the fight that's supposed to be there, um, and then the bird, you just, again, like you said, it's just going the opposite direction. But it's a lot easier, I feel like, coming back than it is going through to get the bird part, because you can just line yourself up on that upper uh, uh, like edge of the northern part and just that lines you up perfectly with the bridge to just sneak right past the trigger now armed with our fancy new science tool of the gate key we're able to return to the present with the story and then luca's gonna ditch us and yeah, she's got some more science to do she doesn't need us normies ruin her science well, then, I guess all we can do is uh, escort the princess home like a gentleman, because that's the natural thing to do. And uh, obviously, nothing has happened that we could be blamed for, right? I would hope not. I mean, you know, just some innocent time-traveling shenanigans. Could not be more innocent in our time-traveling shenanigans than we were. If anything, it's Marl's fault, because she had the pendant. I suppose that that's one way to look at it. <laughs> at least if you're if you're avoiding blaming Luca for building the device in the first place. Well, of course. I mean, she it, like everyone didn't even think it would work in the first place. So the fact that it worked alone, she should be off the hook. Yeah, sure. Oh, here's the chancellor. Why does he look exactly like the other chancellor? I don't know. It, the, the jerkiness is in the jeans. So, uh, apparently we're under arrest. All thanks to the Im newly implemented court system due to Yakra's nonsense in the 600 time. So, Chad, how's everybody doing today? What do you think? Guilty or not guilty? Yeah, get those, get those guesses in chat, because this is, uh, it, it's a coin flip, right, for the second guy? Uh, if... If you do everything according to the speedrun strats, uh, I believe that second guy is a coin flip on whether he's not guilty or guilty, and then everybody else is set. Yeah, it's like a 52-48. Now, we could force a guilty verdict, but it would cost more time than we would save with a guilty verdict. So yeah, exactly. the way we've done this, it's RNG, but of course all RNG in this game can be manipulated. So if they do it precisely in closing of the windows, they can force the guilty verdict. But if you're just playing casually and do this exact sequence, it will be 50-50. Or close enough. But we will know from the second juror. So the first thing we're judged for is running into Barley, and the second thing is going to be that we picked up the pendant, which counts as the fortune tempting us. Yes, always key to take dependent before talking to her at all. If you talk to her first, you will be found not guilty. Yep. And it's very easy to do it because you're mashing at that point and you're right by her. So you could very easily just like 
do it if you're not if you're just kind of in the zone and not paying full attention. Because that's definitely that, not you happening. Have be, you have to be very careful on your answers here because you do have to scroll. Yes, it's you have uh, to two. Say that Marley started it, and you have to say that the fortune tempted. Here we go. And that's guilty, guilty, guilty. Bad. Runners have been bad. Deemed by Guardia's royal court. And let's see here. Keep going to make it a clean sweep. Ow. Oh, well, two out of three isn't bad. Nope. Not bad at all. So what it'll cost is a couple extra dialogue boxes, and we'll see the difference up ahead. Yeah, the 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 dialogue box we're referring to is when you are being brought to the officer's room of the prison right before you would fight the dragon tank. There's That text is different based on your guilt. There's actually a couple different ways to do the prison break. If you played this casually and maybe didn't know everything you could do, perhaps Luca came and broke you out of your jail cell. We're not going to do that. Oh no, we're going to be bad. We're going to be real bad. But to be fair, it's their fault for leaving us with all of our equipment. They think like, I'm very mean, overconfident in those guards. Yeah, I, I think they might need to reform their prison system yet again. Well, the first reform was just of the justice system. They didn't figure out the prison system yet. Uh, yes, that's a fair point. So the big difference here is the Chancellor is saying he's... Chrono's being held for execution, and if we were found not guilty, as we'll see on the left, the uh, jail warden will argue with that point a little bit. And if the uh, public felt sympathetic, you get a care package. If they don't we feel don't... sympathetic, you get nothing. You get death. Right. Yeah, and we don't really need those ethers, so we ignore them. Um, so what we do here, the sa the saving there is a safety, because what we're looking for in this combat is to get 60 hit points of damage on the cyclone that we do on this first guard. If we aren't on 60, then we need to restart. I would assume everybody's still on RNG. I didn't notice anything off, but we'll see what happens here. The so Cyclone is great for being able to one-shot the guards here. It would take two standard attacks, so the difference is obvious. We're saving time. Of course, you can skip these masks. You have to line up Chrono's hair just in between them. Uh, there's a shadow on the floor you can work with as a visual cue for that. Oh, yeah. Although I feel like, I don't know, me personally, I was doing this casually as, like, a teenager when I first played this game. So I was... That was like one of the few things that like was a really easy transition for me in the speedrun. So I'm curious if more people did that casually before seeing a speedrun and knowing about that skip. <laughs> now and, we can see Red yeah, Slash thought... taking advantage of a certain uh, movement. I wouldn't say it's a glitch, but if you run diagonally, you you move faster than if you run in a straight line. So like the way Red was running there, how like Chrono was facing us, but he was still moving at the full normal speed, right? That's kind of what was happening there. Also, unfortunately, we will not be saving Fritz today. Poor, poor Fritz. Yeah, poor Fritz. As far as these guards, they are designed to be something you can skip just by uh, walking past them and knocking them out when they're turned in the wrong direction. Then there's uh, some more guards to get past. And hey, here's Luca. What's up? Back oh, that from is her another thing I wanted to mention that we just saw is uh, you see the pause is happening where the screen uh, grays out, if you will. And that's being done to advance basically one pixel at a time or in the smallest increment that we can. So when the runners are trying to line up something perfectly, they may be using those pause strats to line it up. Now we have our first kind of 
I won't say difficult fight, but this is definitely the first test for anyone learning the run. Um, this is the first RNG-based boss fight. If you do this fight correctly, you mow through Dragon Tank with a bunch of crits on the head to kill it very quickly, and then Fire Whirl to finish off the body. As you 600 can see, HP for that head, you have to take it out to stop the healing, and then the rest of the Dragon Tank is trivial at that point. And important because he actually does physical damage when those wheels are in place. So, with the unequip, you would get massacred by that attack if you took it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, this fight at the levels and equipment that we're at, it, without the uh, manipulation, it would be very tough. I, I would question whether people would be able to without some good luck. That cyclone to finish off the head. Wheels gone as well. Of course, cyclone's great for AoEing, but we can't just use that from the start because then the head would heal. The counter heal is so rough with this fight because it really punishes you for using your techs. You know, you have to kind of just focus all of your efforts because the cyclone's doing basically about the same damage as the heal is healing. So you're not really gaining any ground on it by just you know, racing it, so to speak. But there we go, we've got two, of, two out of three tanks down, and third tank's almost there. And Chancellor Surprise on FFC, if that's not the best face in the game, I have no idea what it is. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you know, that's that's such an easy emote for any channel, is to just have that. It's so, it's so good, it's so, uh, it's great. It's a fantastic, uh, it's great. Another little skip we're doing here is a uh, dialogue skip with these guards. So you just have to move to the side instead of walking straight down, and then you're able to bypass their trigger. Yep, again, it's very, you know, very similar to encounter skips that we do. You know, it's just you can kind of make Chrono skinny and sneak right past it. All right, so Marley decides that. Uh... This place just doesn't have enough fun and excitement, and she's leaving. So she's going to go with us instead. Nothing could possibly go wrong with this. I mean, people always escape from kingdoms with no repercussions. It happens all the time. And nowhere to go. Yeah. yeah. Silence! Dead end silence. in the forest. I love how they just scream silence when you're not talking. Silence. And we see one of many of the secret zeal boxes chilling in the forest here. Yeah, nothing we can do about that at this time. Of course, every time they say silence, I think of a certain Jeff Dunham puppet. I'll leave oh, it at that. Oh, for, see, for me, it's a, a specific Futurama episode. All right, and so we have another gate. It opens up. And one more time for Chancellor Surprise. Or as I like to call it, Chancellor Wah Face. Is it Wah? Uh, good times. Every time, like, uh, it's, it's, it's not it, old. thousands and thousands of times I've seen that, and it's still, like, I can't not smile when I see it. But the YOLO strats have brought us to the future. So we just it's very advanced and stuff <laughs> and stuff. So we're going to use the rats here to get out of all almost every encounter that we can't avoid um, by using the stealing text. The uh, game won't activate any encounters while those text boxes are up. So we can just run right through normally. We don't have to worry about going around any specific counterpoints or anything like that. Just let the rat steal from you. You don't need the tonic or the 500 gold. And you just slip right by. And then the rest of the Lab 16 is pretty simple. Just running through, missing all the encounters. Too bad, because it's a great song. But There are some treasures that we pick up here as well. That Berserker is very important to the whole run. And oh, just missed that skip. 
So extra fight, but we're able to run from it. So it's not a huge time loss, but it's definitely a time loss. Yes, and RNG is not hyper important right now, so Keat shouldn't have to do any resetting or anything like that. Just a little bit of a time loss, like you said. Quick run away. Cyclone, or the uh, the craters aren't very fast, so you get, they, they're, they shouldn't get any turns in before you can get out of there. Well, next up on the boss parade is, of course, the Guardian weighing in at 1,200 HP. This guy is built to teach you about combos and delta attacks and all that. What do our runners do in reaction? Nah, we're just going to skip it. I, like, it's such a boring fight, so why bother, you know? And this yeah, is what... Right. Yeah. This is what I was referring to at the beginning of the game when uh, you saw some of the runners switch their schemes around. You cannot press the menu button in that room when the alarm's on or it will trigger an encounter. So how we trick the game is you switch your menu button to a different button. Uh, I think most, most people use just switch it to Y. And then you just do the normal um, skip and easy money. Um, so... No, we That's... don't get any money. We skip the fight. We just get any <laughs> the seed is a reward. It's the easiest of money because it's a it's a seed that grows no matter where you put it. It's the easiest right. of money. Sure. Now, unfortunately, there is no rat skip because boy, I wish there was. I hate this stupid rat. <laughs> uh, the the bane of many a casual players. This rat. I cannot tell you how many times I would stroll into some. Some person playing this game for the first time or first time in a long time, and that rat just trolls them into oblivion. And then the bane of early emulation, that specific door, having to do the password of L and R and A at the same time. About a half hour in, going to be just over two hours left on this run before... We're heading on further into the Chrono Relay, but there's a lot going on here. The schedule just popped up in chat. Radical Dreamers coming up after we're done. Oh, we got plenty of Chrono Trigger to enjoy before that. Oh, yeah. And we've got a nice skip going on in two of the screens with... Uh, we're Basically, we skipped the first half of this cutscene by doing the, uh, you know, the, the normal skip in this room after we, you know, get, enter the room and then do the skip to get through the first half of the cutscene. So it saves us from having to watch the devastating Lavos attack. So we never find out what does this button do? No, no we don't. No YOLO strats for Merle today. So inspirational music allows us to run fast and get out of here. This bug room is kind of dangerous. It's It's somewhat easy to run into those bugs so you have to take a good line it takes a lot of practice i've definitely run into those bugs plenty of times in my day yeah their hitboxes are pretty weird it's it's definitely a thing to get used to because it's not quite what you'd expect casually yeah they're very unique compared to other enemy hitboxes in the game for sure so our great reward for saving this people from starvation, etc., is getting a key to a motorcycle. Air cycle? I don't know. Hover bike. Yeah, I'll buy that. But more importantly, we get to meet the most important character in all of canon. The man, of course. I was going to say, we don't talk to the cat. <laughs> so we uh, we get we get our race and I'm excited because when I saw that Red and Keat were both running Chrono Trigger, these guys put up some pretty nice bike times or bike bike points totals. Um, this mini game is a lot of people don't like it. I love it. I think it's great. It's really fun. When you know the strat that will always work, it's pretty simple. And that is there's a definite time period that the boost will give you an advantage for. So all you have to do to win 
is be clear of Johnny once the counter gets down to a four, and then boost. You will win. Now, they can do faster than that by being out front of Johnny, as we're seeing them do, taking advantage of the rubber band. But all you have to do to win is be clear and boost. It actually is faster. The more bounces you get. Wow, 2,000 points. GG's. That's impressive. Getting over 2,000 is very tough. Yeah. I, I think Chad is a little sad, though, that it's not 9,000, or I'd imagine we'd see a few more emotes. If someone could do 9,000 on the bike race, they would be, like, they would become the man. Like, they would literally <laughs> just instantly turn into the man. Like, it just, that was what would happen. By the way, there's a little uh, cooldown scene after the race, but you're able to skip that. So, a little time save. A little itty uh, This first uh, bugger fight you have to deal with, the second one is avoidable by not running within the right frame. You just have to get down to the staircase first, and then, hey, we found a new character! Icon Rick Astley in robot form? Sign me up. So, Robo, I personally fond of renaming him to Nine for Niner, just because that's a thing I can name him to. Uh, when you're naming people the one character, you can't have three, you can't have two people with last name, I'm sorry, not the last name, with the character name of O, like Chrono, and you can't have two people with the last name A. So, two of these characters you have to rename. To something. Kind of like going with uh, quotation and comma um, for, for those two, for uh, Robo and Ayla respectively, as those are the ones where you have to, you can't just delete down and press start. I was good with nine for Robo and comma for Ayla personally. Sure. Yep. Also, that way she also basically has a theme song. <laughs> I'll get to that later. So Robo is going to tell us we can't open the door because the the power is off. So we have to do something about the power. We'll head back north to a factory that we couldn't access earlier if you ever tried in a casual run of trying to go up there without Robo. It just laughs at you, basically, and it's like, no, no. The screen will turn on and then immediately turn off. You don't even get dialogue. It's just like, no. <laughs> Please in leave. In other words, none shall pass. Well, almost none. If you happen to be the coolest robot ever, then you can pass. Well, that's different. Right. Uh, the factory is where, as you're learning to speed run, you'll really start feeling the difference. So many encounters here are skippable, but you're not probably not going to figure it out casually. So you learn the speed run, and you're able to make pretty easy work of several skips here. But also, this is really one of the biggest differences you can see with that RNG manipulation. Yeah, because this fight can, these these fights with the acids can really drag on, um, you know, doing like one damage attacks, like for turn after turn after turn. So being able to manipulate the crit there with Robo to have it be a two attack kill, it's pretty nice. Yeah, now glitchless one strat you can do there is to throw on the Berserker and he'll do the damage, but it's still going to take two rounds. Yep. As far as those robots, that skip freaks me out every time I do it because it feels like I missed it this time. But uh, it, it's actually pretty consistent. It's just the scariest looking skip. Yeah, it's it, the because of the way they move. You know, the sprites move at like an unusually quick pace compared to everything else in the game. So it's like a really strange like it's almost a hesitation you have to do to prevent that like one that's going down and left from hitting you or crossing your path. Um, but yeah, so as we can as we can see here on the uh, the skips are pretty simple. It's just uh, walking in the right spot. Yeah, they skipped four encounters coming into this room, just to make that clear. There were yeah. two in the hallway, 
one in the vertical hallway and then one in the last hallway that they just casually skip. These greens versus reds, this is part of RNG manipulation. They can affect what, what the distribution is. And that matters because you really don't want to let these things unite and do the AoE damage. Yeah, no, it's super. It takes a lot of time, and it and there you can die pretty easily if you get unlucky and have like two of them happen at the same time. As oh yeah, there, there's one. Yeah, it, it's rough. It's rough for sure. But you know, there's not much that you can do when they're right next to each other, and there's only two of them left. Because you want to try and just, like, get ones that are isolated, or if there's, like, a group of them together that Chrono can Cyclone that are one color or, or another. You're ideally looking for either five greens or five reds. Those are the best ones, because then you could just do whatever. You don't have to, like, think about what you're doing. You can just Cyclone and Power Punch or Rocket Punch and go to town. So generally speaking, whenever you see a runner move to an extreme wall, that's probably something they're doing to skip an encounter. Now, of course, we have to enter the password, which uh, fortunately we don't have to go to the other side of the factory to learn. We're just able to enter it. And here we go. Now, upcoming is another important boss fight. This is going to be the R series. They weigh in at 150 HP each, which is not that bad. However, when they start playing volleyball with you, that's pretty bad. Yeah, you know, you, it's very crucial to make sure that these bots do not get deep into their turns because not only do those volleyball hits hurt, they take forever. They're so long. It feels like 10 seconds per attack, and then they, they get like a million of them. It's like, I, I can't even keep track of them sometimes when they start going, because it's like, wait, which one's turn was that? I don't even know. <laughs> so we have a strat that works very well for dealing with that, and that's what we're going to see here. Well, we'll see it in a minute, because we have to uh, sit through this scene, which was spoiled by the opening credits. Right? Yeah, seriously, wait, it's spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> uh... Good times, though. Those opening credits. All right, Keith able to get through the fight now. Yeah, that was he. He easily had the roughest time. Um, th those slimes were in a really bad position. He basically had to get those AOE attacks in because there's just he couldn't he couldn't wait the whole time. It just would have taken way too long. Yeah, ideally you never want the greens and oranges to be right next to each other, and uh, the greens are a lot easier to kill than the oranges. However, you don't want to manipulate all greens because then you don't, don't get enough experience, and that actually matters. Yeah, it's fair. The run is so managed on the levels that you have to get uh, enough experience in certain places for things to line up right. Yeah, basically, like screw up your stats and then not be able to do like elixir glitch or you're you know not the right power for certain attack damage values to hit the right numbers because like there are so many fights in the late and mid game that like you're literally doing one or two hit points more than the exact amount of damage so it, you know you can't afford to be one power short or like you know anything like that for almost all the fights that you do after I don't know, like Nisbul probably, I would say. The big thing here is we're using Chrono's Cyclone. He cyclones the front row once, the back row twice, and then cleans up the front row. So four turns of Chrono, and you better get those inputs in in time, because if you give these robots extra time, it's going to get unpleasant. Uh, you know, if you're lucky, you'll just lose one character, but you know, more than likely, you'll probably lose both. Because um, these guys are really good about bullying one character, as you can see here, uh, with all three of those punches landing on Halation's side, um, right on Chrono. So, like, if you have a character who is, like, chilling around, like, 50 HP, and you only have the three bots left, but you let them get extra turns, it could very easily go into someone getting uh, getting killed, and then 
like we were saying, you're way far behind at that point in terms of your levels. Because this gets you a lot of XP, as you can see. And uh, unfortunately, Robo got very wrecked there, and he will need further repairs from Luca. By the way, uh, very high props to the narrative of the game that they put this level of detail in as giving a solid reason why somebody was going to have to stay behind and you were only going to have three characters. Just one of the small details of the game that helps make it the greatness that it is. And it, it is nice when games do a good job of explaining the limitations in a reasonable way. Because, you know, you have so many RPGs that, like, limit your party size, but are just kind of like, well, you can only have four people deal with it, or whatever, you know, however many it is. So and, that, is uh, a good, that is a good point. Question in chat asks if this is the original or the DS, and I'll throw in other versions as well. This is the original SNES version. All of our runners playing on the American version instead of the Japanese version. Uh, although the Japanese version would be faster text-wise, the uh, glitches of the American version are actually superior for the run than the Japanese version. So here we are, the end of time, and uh, we're going to make a new friend. Our, our good buddy, our good pal, he just wants somebody to have some fun with. Our buddy, Speckio. The I'd master. be pretty bored, too, if I was stuck in the end of time as, like, an all-powerful magical being. <laughs> so we get our explanation why we can only have three. Normally, they don't want you to touch the Lavos bucket or you get an extra message, but we're able to do that now, and he treats it as you're trying to leave, so it's faster to get him to say hey go check the door it's froggy speckio if you've never seen that form it's because you were too high a level when you got here and of course feel free to walk around your room three times thinking magic but we are not to be held responsible for the consequences yeah chat think magic like you know we we got to get through this part so if it's on you guys specifically to think magic helpful runners chat give them your energy now, the uh, walk around the room just actually means hit specific points, so that's why there's a bit of a meme walk going on there. Now, more more importantly, the uh, Speccio skip coming up. Uh, it's, in, it's, it's real easy to mash through the section and fight Speccio, and that's a very monster time loss. And even if you win, it's not really worth anything, so, so you get, what, one ether? Or is it one magic tab? You could also learn antipode early, but that doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, no, that's that's not that important, though. No. Casually, sure, but for for our purposes, a new. GG's chat. Magic has been fortified in us. The uh, next important ch question for chat is, what kind of cake? Oh yeah, definitely. Because of course, the cake is not a lot. Not not today. Personally, I'll go for a good strawberry shortcake. Can it be pumpkin pie? Kind of in season. You just said pie, not cake, so you answered your <laughs> own question. That's why I asked. It could be a pumpkin spice cake if you really want. Uh, I mean, I guess so. Maybe thinking maple cream instead. Well, we get the henches here as our introduction to this cave. This uh, magic cave is an interesting spot. We're able to avoid uh, several encounters here, not quite all of them. In particular, the uh, next room over, we're going to have to move very carefully to make that skip happen right. But again, anytime you see runners moving to an extreme, probably tells you they're doing it to avoid a fight. Or maybe 50-50. Yeah, I would probably say 50-50 with this group of runners. Yes, maple cream is delicious. I recommend it to anyone who likes maple flavored anything. Look it up. Thank me later. But yeah, oh, these fight cheesecake. It has cake in the name. <laughs> well, 
Of course, the end of this cave is uh, very notable for Hecron, and uh, Hecron weighs in 2100 HP. He is a magic machine, he'll deal water damage, and you can only really damage him with magic instead of melee attacks. So uh, what is our answer to Hecron? Uh, you know, he's kind of weird. Um, I don't like his face, so we're just going to skip him. You know, like, it's, eh, whatever. It, it is an annoying face. And plus, like, it, it, you're, you're not forced to not use Robo, but, like, it's more advantageous to use the girls in this fight. So it's like, if you're making me have to not use Robo, I'd rather just skip the fight. You know, it's just my personal taste. Uh, also, I want to make special note of this bat skip that we saw. You uh, could see the bats up on the wall, and of course we'll see it one more time. Uh, there's a little crack in the floor that you have to watch for, and just start going down when you get there, and you're able to go down and around to avoid the bats. It's a little bit tough to learn, but very rewarding to not have to fight the bats. Yeah, that's a, it, it's a very interesting movement that you have to take to get around it. Um, I almost feel like you're dragging against the lower corner when you do it. Like that's how I, that's how I like thought about it when I was learning that specific movement. Because it's very really easy to just like keep going too far left because you're like coming up and like going around and down like immediately. It's very unusual movement for this game. In story, we go back to the fair to use the gate. Uh, of course, what we were supposed to learn in the future was about the existence of Lavos. Lavos is the destroyer of worlds. And we go back to 600 to look for information. Well, actually, we went back to the present, and then, uh, oh, what's his face? Hecron tells us uh, if only Lavos had destroyed the world 600 years ago when he was created by Magus. So we say, oh, let's go stop Magus. Talk to Melchior, but meh. He's old. He needs his sleep. You know, he's all tired from the fair. So we'll we'll talk to him later. It's fine. Yeah, time for bird skip once again. Uh, so generally dude. speaking, everything we're doing takes the same amount of time. Like the the perfect walking, the perfect battle. That all takes the same amount of time. What really separates the runners is when they're able to execute things first try versus maybe it takes the second or third try. So that's where the separation starts to build. And in a setting like this, you're going to be really rewarded for consistency. Absolutely. So it's always important to not forget to talk to the captain before you go to the castle. That is a easy time loss to, you know, once you've run this game enough and you start going through the motions of this section, You'd be like, oh yeah, come to get the jerky, and then, oh wait, nope, nope, nope. And also, you have to be careful with the chef's dialogue. You have to let him actually finish his tirade, or you're not going to get the jerky. Yep, he has to have 100% hissy fit complete before he gives you the jerky. Which means you just have to stand at the doorway till he says, pipe down. And then he'll stop you, you'll get the jerky. The greatest food source in the Chrono universe. Hey, a very smart question in chat asks, how does this relay work? So as soon as a runner finishes their game, they will message the next runner of their team to start their turn. So they'll start the next game and they'll just hand off like that. So the runners for Radical Dreamers are on standby until we finish Actually, they may not even be there yet, because they've still got, well, over an hour and a half. But uh, they'll just start up after we finish with Chrono Trigger. And it'll go team by team, so they don't all start at the same time except for Chrono Trigger. I agree. So now we've got um, on Halation's screen... The one of the more annoying skips and made it look really easy, uh, skipping Zombor. So you have to, to do two different save anywhere reloads in that section. The first one to get past the night captain, and then the second to get past uh, Ozzy in that first Ozzy encounter. 
If you do both successfully, you'll be able to just skip the whole bridge sequence entirely. Again, as Halation did, make it, making it seem effortless. And Ozzy's out of here. Uh, also, we're able to skip the Tata introduction here on the Nandora Mountains by using Save Anywhere, and we save behind him, and then we're just moving on. But yeah, we're seeing a great run so far out of Halation. Yeah, this is this is the it, 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 they're starting to pull away now. Um, I'm not really sure where the 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 difference went. It seemed like it just kind of came out of nowhere. It was a pretty big difference between them. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, the, the other thing, though, is I'll say don't get too wrapped up in a lead until after we get through Magus. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, Masamune can definitely change things very easily, and and Magus as well is a, a nice follow-up to troll the runners into oblivion. So, yeah, it's still really early. For sure. There are plenty of flip-up points in this run to come. Now, or even, even the most experienced runner. These mountains are one of my favorite to learn the skips on because it's so nice not to have all these annoying fights, especially with the outlaws. So there's a lot of move to the side. Keep moving right away. Uh, don't let this bird spawn or travel over. Just walk up a couple pixels and then straight across. All kinds of fun stuff. It's a and very, it's a very important fight. section to learn, too. But yeah, go, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, no, it's, now, yeah, this is... Go ahead. This one, though, that's coming up is one of the most annoying. We've got uh, a bird who loves to be a jerk, but I'm repeating myself. A common theme of the game. Jerky birds. Yeah, that one right there. We need him to act in a specific way for us to be able to skip properly. And there we go. Yeah, so. basically you want him to be backing away while you're climbing the ladder. Otherwise, he'll knock you back down into the encounter. So sometimes he'll be nice and just kind of hang back the whole time. And other times he'll just like wait and sit there and you'll just have to hang out and hope that he decides to get out of the way. When you're playing casual, your best bet is just run down, run through the encounter. Don't trigger it, run up. And that'll work like two thirds of the time but it's not reliable. And yeah, you can't you can't get into any extra encounters in this section or you have to restart the entire mountain sequence because you need the RNG to be perfect for this fight against Masamune. Masa and Mune separately, you have to be careful because they love to counterattack. But there's a simple solution for that. And when you learn Luca's magic you get the third level skill which is fire you also do get hypno wave as well but uh, they're just going to focus their targets because you only have to take one of the two down and then this is the big guy this is one of the most pivotal fights of the run this one's big the combined mass immune fight 3600 hp Gotta be careful of storing tornado energy. And uh, what else are they watching out for on this one? Um, it's important that you're hitting your beats at the right time in this fight. It's so easy to hesitate on a menu option, and then that just changes his attack pattern. Because as you see on Halation's screen, he moves around, and he won't attack a character unless he's near them with a physical, like, regular attack. And his counterattacks don't happen until he's storing tornado energy. So if you do this fight correctly, he'll hit the characters you need him to hit. And the, the, so nobody dies and everybody can do their own thing and not have to waste turns healing. Um, so as you can see, like, Luca hit Masamune, so he left, for, left Robo and started going towards Luca. But then now you have Robo attacking him back, so now he wants to go back to Robo and attack Robo back. So you're kind of like kiting him, so to speak, 
back and forth between the two characters. And Keeping Berserk Chrono, which means you can't ever use Slash to disperse the tornado energy. So this is a very tight battle script. You have to be right on it or you're in trouble. Yeah, this is this fight for people who are looking to get into the run or like, you know, have started learning it. This fight is the best way to learn about how to properly do menu inputs in battle and like doing it during the right times because you will not get through this fight and have everybody survive if you're off the script by waiting or putting in inputs too early or too late. Let's also mention that using the Fire Punch dual attack, which is a very powerful attack at this point, and first mass immune victory. Nice, very clean, very clean fight relation, and Red is very close behind. He's got a few more attacks to go. And uh, keep just getting into the combined fight now. They're still keeping a race out of this all the way around. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Red's certainly within striking distance, and Keat is definitely definitely still in it. Um, you know, there's a lot left to do, so that's, uh, no, one's, no one is ever really out of a Chrono Trigger race until the very end, because, we, you know, the Lavos boss rush is enough to screw with anybody. So, you know, there nobody's really out of it until GG's dot done is in. Yep, that is without question one of the biggest hurdles to clear. Two of our runners clear of it now. Third one working on it. But we have finished the mountains, and another very important thing to remember is make sure you go get the badge. Yeah, don't forget the badge. Oh my god. Yeah, that's oof. That's a rough that's a rough time loss. If you forget the badge. Yeah, there's a lot of sections, or there's a lot of parts in this section of the game that, like, you can very easily forget some very innocuous item and lose a big chunk of time having to go get it again. And now we get, we get to count our favorite things, which is news coming up very soon after this. Is this the longest shop in the uh. game? Probably between this or... I guess we don't do Blackbird here, because this is 100%. Yeah, I would say this is probably the longest shop that you do in the No LSS run, depending on when you do it. But I'm pretty sure this is standard now. I know it used to be kind of, uh, you could do it before or after. Um, yeah, I think most people do it before now. I also want to give our runners a shout out on this. Honestly, running in a marathon situation like this is probably even a little bit harder than just chasing an any percent run. Because in any percent run, you do something wrong, the run's dead, reset, start over. They have to have no backup strats. They have to be able to recover to be able to finish the run if something goes wrong. So they've got that much extra pressure on them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, again, the, this you know, uh, this this speed run is very intimidating for new people. Ooh, new sighting, nice. Um, it's intimidating for new people because how heavy the execution is. But there are backups. There are ways around mistakes. You know, it's not like if you screw up once, you're just the whole run's dead and you can't go on. You know. Obviously, if you're watching someone who's a really top runner, yeah, then they're going to be resetting at those points. But, like, as someone learning a run or looking to get into it, yes, the execution is very tight, but at the same time, you know, you can certainly still advance through most of the run without being pristinely perfect. Unlike these runners are being. New number two. Wow, two for two for red. So we see... On average, theoretically, you'll see one per run. Of course, it doesn't always work out that way. But uh, between these runners, we should see... We've got a bunch of chances to see news. We've got 12 chances in total. As long as we do everything right. Now, 
Now, if you miss uh, the bird skip, then it's just going to be faster to run away from this fight. But uh, whenever you're running away, you'll see them actually enter either the tech or item menu. Actually, it'll always be the tech menu. But they'll enter that while they're still holding L and R. That builds the run meter, even though they're in the menu. And then when you exit the menu, you are basically automatically running away. Yep, exactly. I don't believe we do bird skip for that one, though. Reverse, right? It's been a while since I've done the run, but I'm, just, I'm cur I can't remember. Well, it gave me a chance to talk about run tech regardless. Good point. Thank you, I try. <laughs> but yep, now we're back. Now we actually want to talk to the old man, Melchior. Now that he's got something for us, we'll, we're going to have to wake him up from his nap. And we do the transition to avoid the conversation, though, because we don't want to talk to him literally. We just want to, you know, figuratively talk to him so we, we can advance the story. We just talk to him. We just want the game to think we talk to him, you know, like, yeah, I won't make that joke. <laughs> Let's just say certain college students. Exactly. So the uh, this fight... Uh, that Halation is in right now is actually kind of tricky uh, to get the Reptites to all be in the right spot. So it's very easy for them to just kind of like wander around aimlessly and then you won't be able to get all three of these in the Antipode attack or like Chrono will have a tough time getting the Slash to hit both of the first two. Um, so again, the RNG is always important in these fights to make them faster but not necessarily like you're gonna die if you're off so yeah. antipode is an area of effect spell it will not do the entire screen so much like what we saw with the flame cyclone in the naga at fight you have to have them in the right range to be able to hit multiple uh, the other thing noteworthy here is we use this party because if you had robo in the party uh, you'd have a conversation about raw boots. We don't want that. I mean, if it was casual, I would, because that's literally my favorite conversation this entire game. But that's yes, fair. for the speed run, we don't want that. Um, we don't want that at all. But, um, you know, now we've got Bela. Bela's here to save us from everything. Oh. <laughs> Halation is trolling Jerry, and I love it. Um heavily uh that's great so uh next up is going to be the forest maze and this is another section where it's just all movement run 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 avoid every encounter it, it, it's great because like if you play this casually there's just encounters everywhere but like in the speed run you don't do a single encounter in it it's, it's it, it just seems like it's a empty zone that was loaded accidentally by the game. And now you're going to get in a fight there, so it's better to avoid the running dinos and get them all in what I call the busy fight, because if I'm not mistaken, that's the most enemies you ever see in a single fight. Uh, I think maybe on Black Omen Elevator 2? There might be one that has seven, but yeah, six is pretty maxed out for in for get for character sprites in a in a battle for sure. Now, as far as the uh, the feast or party scene or whatever we care to call it goes, the uh, important thing will be monitor that third character, which in this case is Marley, and they're always going to do the same thing, and it tells you which phase you are on. There's basically three phases, and not until you see the second dialogue out of that character can you talk to Ayla and do the actual competition for the Dream Stop. So unfortunately, it looks like Halation didn't get Robo into the party, so there's going to be some dancing going on first before they can continue, and that'll give a little bit of time back to Red since he has Robo in. Robo doesn't like to dance, so it's a little faster. No, he likes to analyze what's in the soup. Yeah, he's 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 like looking to be the next uh, robot cook. Iron chef, if you will. 
Yeah, so it's a little easier to tell what the Robo is up to than it is with Marley. He'll stay in the one spot, but uh, you'll see, if you're watching for this, you'll visually see his sprite change. Like, he'll go from running in place to standing still, and it's very easy to tell at a glance which phase he's in. But uh, we finish the party and find out that... Uh, they didn't care about our money. They didn't care about our stuff. The only thing they cared about, for whatever reason, was the gate key. Now we got a fight with a hangover, which is never fun. Ever. But, you know, we do what we gotta do to get back to the future. Alright, so, proceeding on, we get Ayla's help, and we head down to the Forest Maze. And Forest Maze is interesting to learn for skips. There's a lot of visual cues, generally speaking, and the more comfortable you are with it, you can go pretty fast through here. Yeah, I, I love doing this run for people who aren't familiar with it, and when they see the section, they're just so mad, because they're like, there's so many encounters in here, and I had to go through all of them. <laughs> <laughs> like that? No, you didn't. Yeah, we're, we're going to take exactly none. Theoretically. Let's let's hope that that's the case for everybody today. I'm going this for last, this, this last skip, that the right before you crawl down the final vine, that one can be kind of tricky. Uh, you have to kind of move in an awkward direction, but I, I feel most, most of the runners should be okay with doing it properly. So, uh, by the way, we had a lead change throughout all that, which is part of what we were saying earlier, is no lead is really safe. But just getting through the feast of all things, it wasn't even combat, it was just the dialogue of the feast. Or party, or whatever we're calling it, I don't know. It can be both. Can it be Festivus? Not yet. It's a little early for Festivus. We still got a month or so to go. All right. We got uh, a lot of Halloween. Is... Halloween's got to happen first. That's true. We, we don't want to skip the candy. Except when we do. Yeah. But that's the, it's wrong. <laughs> the, you know, there's a very specific time when we want to skip the candy. Uh, dinosaurs, you have this little gimmick going on where you shock them with lightning, and once you do their physical defense lowers considerably. The uh, the monkeys here, what's important is you want to be walking up when they're walking down, and then you, it's just, it's weird to describe, but you, you basically have to be moving from the first moment you enter that room to be able to skip a, the first fight. I like to think of it of like Metal Gear Solid kind of movement, where like, if he's not seeing you, then he doesn't care. And that's basically what you're doing. You're running so that he he never actually confirms your presence. And by you, I mean the first character. Uh, the other two characters don't matter. It's just whoever's the first character there. That's the one that is going to trigger that fight, whether he sees you or not. He's got tunnel vision. So here we go to Nisbol, and uh, Nisbol is quite the character. Nisbol has 4,200 HP. We use the unequip, which is going to lower the damage he can do to us considerably, and we're going to use the Berserker strats on Ayla to deal out a lot more damage. Yeah, she's a truck in this section, She, you know, because... When the characters join the party in these sections, they're not like leveled to what your level is. They're a set level that they come in at. So she's way stronger right now, physically, than anybody else in your party is. You can see she's doing 426 damage critical hits on Nisbil, which is, you know, way more than anything your characters can put out. You can see Luca doing only 228 with her fire attack. So it's it. This fight is basically just. Let Ayla go nuts and just, you know, the other two characters kind of just nip and spam their magic attacks to keep Nisbol uh, at bay. And you absolutely want to have those uh, lightnings queued up whenever the release is coming so that when Ayla hits again, he's vulnerable to the damage. 
Yeah, you definitely don't want Ayla to get a hit in when his defense is up. That would be an unfortunate time loss because she's not going to, you know, obviously do nearly as much when the defense is up. But yeah, this fight's this fight's pretty simple. Um, you know, if you're off RNG, it's not a huge deal. You're just going to have to take, like, one extra lightning attack from Nisbul. But because of the unequipped glitch, your characters take so little damage, it doesn't even matter. Like, you're not, you're not, you're not really at risk of dying here as long as you have everybody, like, have the right magic and you have Ayla equipped with the Berserker, you should be fine. We have our first Nisbul down. Coming up on second, and I feel like we've seen uh, Keith make up some time here as he's just getting into the Nisbul fight. I feel like he has been able to close that gap as time yeah, has gone on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he was definitely further behind than that at the earlier parts. So yeah, this is getting it's getting nice and nice and close again, which is nice. Uh, we can we'll have a nice stretch to cover these next few sections, which are very intensive. There's a lot of stuff that's about to go down after we've forged the Masamune um, tech-wise. So I'm excited to explain it all. But yeah, this this is the. This is kind of the, the cooldown part of the speedrun, because we don't do a lot now. Um, we're just going to go back to the go back to present time, forge the Masamune, and then get all of Frog's backstory. Yeah, we're just going to forge the legendary weapon, that's all. Yeah, you know, casual. We do these things all the time, right? Uh, also, because we don't get the chance to remove... Uh, Ayla's equipment after this fight is done. It's very important to pick up that second Berserker that is here. There's only two in the game, and we're going to need it. So, that's why we see our runners grabbing that on the way out. You can grab it on the way in. But... Alright, so we jump up the mountain, because that's a natural thing to do. Fortunately, the gate catches us, and then it's a Nice little chat with Milk is up next. Oh, the, the manipulation people come up with to skip cutscenes is just fun. It's, it, it really is. Like, I, I, it's probably one of the most enjoyable parts of the speedrun is just doing all these, uh, you know, encounter and boss and uh, cutscene skips by just like, you know, fading out the door. It's it's such a simple concept and it applies so often in the run. It's it's really it's really rare, honestly, to see one specific glitch have such a huge influence on so many different parts of the speedrun. So it makes it makes learning that very important. Like getting good fade outs is really key to getting good with these skips and stuff. And Nisbul down for the third time. So the biggest thing about this scene with Melkier is it's set up to either have Luca or Robo assist. And then there's more dialogue and stuff. And we don't want that in a speedrun. So we're basically fooling the game into thinking that no one is assisting Melkier. He just does it all himself. And uh, it's a good time. Everything is a good time when we're playing Chrono Trigger. Absolutely. So now that we have the Mass Immune, we have the ability to recruit Glenn. Which means, of course, we have more chances at new sightings. Currently, just, it's two. Yeah. Just two. Just two. But we got a lot left to go. Now, on average, we should see at least one more, but of course, we're pulling for more than that. In fact, chat, you want to guess the final new count of the day? Feel free to get those guesses in chat. How many news will we end up seeing for the day? We've already seen two. We do have the potential for the fabled four for four, since both of the news we saw were in Red's run. All right, for oh. sure. Oh. Sad times. Chat's all about those news, about those news, about those news. All right, there is uh, going to be a lot of scenes that we have to sit through next. The good news is we get really hype music for it. Yes. Very true. 
In fact, I have a standing policy when uh, we get to that one scene that I will not talk over the music in any <laughs> that I do or commentary that I do because it's just too good. Fair point. It's a, it is a very good scene. And a great uh, tutorial on how to carve mountains. Sure, for all of your mountain carving needs. I always go to Glenn for my mountain carving needs. I wouldn't have it any other way. I cannot argue with that. So coming up in uh, the run, we're going to have several boss fights in a row in Magus's castle. Um, I don't want to rush the Magus part. We'll explain that when he's up. Uh, just trying to think if there's anything we haven't really covered yet at this point. We've gone into the glitches pretty well. Of course, there's a lot of head on this relay. Be sure to join us for your favorite game, which you're probably already doing. But hey, there's a lot more fun, too. All these games are great. Um, you know, like if you haven't played Radical Dreamers before, it's it's a very fun. Just like quick one day romp, like, you know, you can clear it in a few hours um, and, it, you know, it's a really enjoyable experience for any Chrono Trigger fan. And then, obviously, Chrono Cross, you know, most I, I would assume most people here have probably at least played it. Um, but I, if, if you haven't, please do. Uh, all these games are amazing. But, you know, the, the, the later titles don't get as much love, which is a shame. You know, the fact that there's no... That Chrono Cross has never been re-released on any console is, like, a travesty. By the way, I uh, did ask our runners when they kind of got started speedrunning Chrono Trigger for Halation. Uh, it was following SGDQ 2018. I believe Wexel did a run there, or that may have been AGDQ, but probably that one if he was inspired by that one. And uh, for Keat, it was uh, about a year and a half been speedrunning Chrono Trigger. I don't know how long for Jerry, but I know it's longer. A few, a few, a few days at least. I would say, more than ten days. <laughs> I, I'm confident on that one. I think that's a safe bet for sure. So we found out how Glenn got turned into a frog. Sad froge. And then nothing to do but head to the mountain. Yeah, Frog's Frog's not really too keen on all this. He he's he's kind of down for staying in his little hovel, but you know, like like most things in life, you have to deal with your adversity head on before you can really get past it. And for the first time, we're gonna see some mountain curving. Frog's massaging the mountain to soften it up a little before he takes the sl the swing. He has to analyze where to make the exact cut. You, you don't want to cut in the wrong spot. No, you don't want to ruin the legendary sword you, ju you just got. That would, that'd be kind of monk s. So up to new number three. Let's see, we still have one more chance for now. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because Keith's still in the, the first cut. Yeah, we will be leaving here. Alright, so Glenn was apparently very talented as a kid even, but uh, didn't want to hurt people, so didn't really want to join the Knights, but uh, still helped Cyrus. And apparently was pretty well known. Yeah, this part is, it's it's a very interesting backstory because you don't really get anything when you first meet Frog in the cathedral about, you know, what he is about. You really get more of his story from NPCs you talk to after you've met Frog, you know, that talk about him because, you know, again, even when you talk to him after the, the battle and, like, you've saved the queen, he's 
You know, he's just kind of like, I screwed up, I'm going to leave, bye. So th this is the first chance we really get to learn anything about him as a person. All right, time to get epic. Here we go, chat. That's how you teach a mountain who's boss. Right. Magic mountain. More like lame mountain. So, next. Oh, I just realized we're on Team Slash's audio, so we haven't actually heard the music yet. <laughs> That's okay. It's it's still it's still appropriate to to have a moment of silence for the first one. But yeah, this this next section is when we start to really rely on the RNG to be manipulated properly, because this is where the fights can wipe you if you're off and you'll have to, you know, it's kind of like the the point of the run where it goes from like you can be kind of messy and still get through to like you have to be more on point or you're going to be resetting. Your, to your saves, your safety saves. Our one dragon sighting of the game, they're at the top of Magus's castle, and of course we get the intro where they brag about the hundred enemies of Magus's castle, and we're gonna take considerably fewer of those fights. Yeah, we don't want to let, you know, we don't want to ruin all of his friends, you know. Alright, now we're getting epic on the music. And yet again, the mountain is taught who's boss. So as far as Magus's castle, you have to go to each of the uh, wings on the sides first before this Ozzy scene will pop up. And then a couple boss battles to deal with. One is perhaps the most fun speedrun boss fight that there is. That's going to be the flea fight. <laughs> and then we also have Slash. To call that a fight is kind of unfair. It's more of like a coffee break in the guise of a fight. Stretch break if you need it. Stay hydrated break. Yep. Whatever you need. Yeah, we start with Flea because um, we want to have as much power and leveledness as we can going into Slash because he's a jerk. Um, he's probably the only non-bird jerk in the speedrun, but he is a jerk. The other big thing is, of course, they're manipulating the attack script, and we're going to be using the Berserker here. So they want as many crits lined up for this fight as possible. So that setup is a big thing. So after dealing with Flea, we see Flea! The old trickery. Flea was debating people back before it was cool. You know, someone has to start a trend. Fair point. This so, fight is pretty simple. 
Um, yeah, you want to go into the mechanics of it? Yeah, sure. So if we're on RNG, which everybody should be, um, Flea's going to kiss Chrono, and then we're going to do a couple of attack inputs um, with the boys, and then Frog's just going to go off on a tear here. Um, and because of the way that the RNG sets up with Flea, because Flea and Frog have the same speed right now, they have their actions queued at the same time. But because the Berserker is equipped on Frog, his turn takes priority over Flea's turn. So it tricks the game into just thinking that Flea has had their turn without actually giving them their turn. So Flea's just gonna laugh, have a good time. They think this is really funny. And after, is it, I, w I don't count the attacks specifically, I just go off of the, the values and then go from there. Is it 13 straight attacks from Frog or 14? I can't remember, but, oh, it's 16. 16. Thank around. you. So after 16 straight attacks, then the rest of the crew will uh, join in on the fun to finish off the fight. But this, the fight is done this way because Flea normally is like the counterattack master. And with with how long each attack takes, like each counterattack, this fight can go on for a long time. So this this circumvents all that, and then at the same time is hilarious because you're literally not doing anything for almost the entire fight. And that's how you do an easy 4,000 plus damage. Uh, there's one of the counterattacks from Flea. And happened again. And Chrono is down. That's not a good thing. No, this is this is dangerous. Now, one thing though is with the party member down, Flea will not do an AOE counterattack. And Lation's through the fight. There we go. Just important not to have Chrono not get this uh, e EXP. So we're 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 safe now. That was that was close. Halation giving us some heart attack strats. We mentioned it earlier, you have to be ready with your backups. And uh, we're skipping a bunch of encounters by not talking to these NPCs, by the way. As far as that treasure box there, if you were to fight for it, you would get a barrier, but our magic defense, because of unequip, is fantastic, so we have no need for a barrier. Then, we have these, uh, at least the Renanites. Um, no, Decidents. Or uh, yeah, yeah okay. the same sprite, different name, basically. I forget which um, name is in which place. They're, I, they're just, just they're skeletons to me. That's that's all. That's all they are. They're just stronger skeletons as the game goes on. Now this sets up for something uh, very interesting. This is going to be the slash fight, which is two phases for a combined eight thousand four hundred damage. Which by far, if you combine those two, makes it the highest HP boss that we have fought so far. The uh, defeat Magus run is probably the most run, most raced category of this game. We've done a few tournaments with that. So as far as that run goes, this is where you're actually having to do the most damage. Yeah, this is a pretty intense fight as well because Slash is very quick. And in the second phase, he can get really aggressive when you get his hit points down to a certain level and if your party isn't prepared to finish him off he can very easily just wipe you um with the yes indeeds and the uh, uh spin cuts that he does at the end of the fight once he gets his actual sword and isn't just fighting you hand to hand keeps up to the skeletons i think he's even gonna get into phase one slash while everybody else is still there yeah it with with keep on RNG and 
uh, Halation off, there's a decent chance that Keep might catch up or pass Halation in the slash fight. We'll see, though. Hey. Now, there's two good reasons to use the Berserker here. One is, of course, more damage, which if you didn't realize this casually, there is bonus damage for the Berserker, of course. Uh, you also don't have to worry about what time you do your inputs, but the other thing it does that is significant is you get a defensive bonus. And Slash here is throwing out the physicals all over the place, so that helps Glenn take less damage. Exactly. And that's okay, Glenn dropping there at the end of Phase 1, um, you know, since there's no XP gained or lost in that part, um, he's not punished there, and everybody, you know, as as is common for Chrono Trigger, at the end of a fight, anybody that died is revived with 1 HP, so Frog is brought back with 1 HP, and then just have to throw a quick mid-tonic on him to get him outside of any damage range that Slash can do this early. And that's just, and, and that's good enough. And uh, Chad asks about the time frame we're looking at. World record of this category is currently held by Ivanas with uh, two hours, forty-seven minutes, seventeen seconds. We're not threatening that right now, but we're on very good pace. Oh yeah, this is you know, you're never gonna get, well, not never, but it'll be pretty rare to get a, a really good run in a marathon or relay type setting where you know you're not you're you know you're disadvantaged by taking certain risks because if you you know you're obviously you can't lose a run doing this so you're gonna be a little more cautious um than you would be if you were say like grinding for a pb red slash the first one through slash two of course red was the better slash this time uh, this hallway in Magus's castle is what I call the hallway of unavoidables. You can run from all of these encounters, but you must get into the fights. You don't have the ability to get around them. Then you get into a second hallway that looks just like this one, and that one's totally avoidable. You just run to the side. The old zigzag. And then you hopefully don't get trolled by the door. Well, I mean, doors are trolls. It's like their job is to keep people out or something. Yeah, but they don't do a perfect enough job of it. As we will have probably no issue, but, you know, that... Because the, you know, the encounter tile is, like, in the doorframe, it's... It can be kind of tricky. As he may be in a pickle and door jam. Hopefully not a pickle in jam, because that would be... Terrifying. Yeah, it sounds like the kind of thing he would do, though. That's probably fair. Uh, Dark Mail, we're skipping there in that treasure chest. Of course, in the glitchless run, you would pick that up. And I referenced that a couple of times because I think with recent marathons, we've seen the glitchless run more than any percent. Yeah, it, because of how uh, unique and uh, difficult the execution is in this game, it's understandable that the glitchless uh, community has a big presence too, because this game is still very fun, and if you don't want to go through the process of learning all the tight manipulation and execution, then the glitchless category is still a nice fun way to enjoy the, the game. Now we've got this outside staircase, they have to be very careful on the movement. Uh, biggest thing is don't be walking while you, one of those rollies are going past. And uh, you want to explain that out of bounds right there? So basically what's happening here is you're using the player two and player three uh, sprites to make the... Um, what are, whatever those bird swords guys are called. I forget what their names are in the castle. Um, he, he wants to move towards you, but because the character sprite's in the way, he's just going to walk off the bridge, but because the game doesn't really understand that, it just has him, like, kind of floating in midair, and it allows you to just walk right by him. Um, but yeah, you can only do it with the first, with the two, two or three, uh, characters, because only character one is going to trigger the, uh, encounter. Freelancers, thank you. Yeah. Again, it, 
It's the outlaw right to me, and I just don't worry about it otherwise. Yep, exactly. Yeah, this the the game does recycle a lot of enemy sprites, but it's understandable considering how detailed everything is in this game. They had to fit it all in somehow. But yeah, as you can see, uh, now we're in the chain section where we have all these juggler fights and. Um, dodging all of these as well, running away is it, you're running away from almost all these fights in Magus's castle. You don't need them, and they're just a waste of time. Now the four jugglers you cannot run from. This fight is forced, but it's relatively quick, even on the RNG or off the RNG rather. Um, but yeah, on RNG it's pretty simple. You're just gonna use frog to crit on these dudes, and then Lucas' fire attack is hits really hard. Um, OKOs these guys, which is really powerful. But yeah, between Slash and uh, Frog crits, you can take care of the other ones. But we do X-Strike to get um, menu set up for later to finish off that third one. X-Strike is also really good damage. All right, so Ozzy's jugglers have been bested, and he's out of here. Possibly to go make jam. Yeah, we we see Keat there, um, running back in and out of the room to reset it because he didn't like the the movement there, and it's understandable because now he's stuck in the fight, which is rough. Getting. You're, it's tough because you have to basically hug the edge of the staircase and also at the same time be pressing only up to get by. So it's very awkward to set it up properly and it takes a lot of practice to perfect it. Um, so even, even the best runners will occasionally get nicked on that fight by one of the roly polies or by one of the freelancers. Time for the great gatekeeper that keeps us away from Magus, that is of course the switches. And I will strongly recommend in casual play, at least once, try Slurp Cut in this fight. I shall say no more. Uh oh the memes. Yeah, we're looking for a uh 119 on the last uh anchor. That tells us that we are on the right RNG for the Magus fight. Otherwise, we would have to reload the room after the fight uh, to reset the RNG. Because the Magus fight, it's very necessary in the first half. Yeah, very critical. The RNG be right. Of course, if you've done this fight, you understand the concept of the barriers. Well, with the RNG manipulation, they're forcing barriers that are favorable. And... If you don't do that, then things get unpleasant fast. Yeah, because keep in mind, we have nobody who... We have no water attack, because Frog never learned magic. And we have no fire attack with this party. And then at the same time, because Unequip Glitch doesn't boost fire damage, fire is actually really powerful and hits us very hard. So it's essential that we get Lightning and Shadow attacks in this fight in the first phase otherwise you can get wiped very quickly uh, also you, not you can enter the menu basically anytime before you talk to magus if you never realize that you're not locked in once you walk in the room you've got plenty of time to enter a menu there are a lot of points in this game where you can enter the menu where you wouldn't expect to be able to And here we go! The battle versus Magus begins. Of course, he starts with no barriers, so you have to hit him to get a barrier up. From there on, first hit from Glenn with that Moss Immune will lower the magic defense. The second hit will cause a barrier change. We always want the magic defense lowered so that we can do the maximum amount of damage in Phase 1. At the end of Phase 1, by the way, you get a free turn where you can still do the bonus damage. That's a fun time, if you're on the right barrier. 
Oh, it really is. Yeah, th this fight is so satisfying when you're on on the RNG. Yo, this would be a good time to say a big thank you to RPG Limit Break for hosting us for this event. Uh, a lot of planning went into this by the uh, admin team with the Chrono Trigger Discord, and RPG Limit Break gave us a great platform to showcase these great games, and we're thankful. So, Chad, how about a hand for uh, RPG Limit Break? Yeah, shout out to the high, uh, high Spirit specifically for uh, helping us with the setup and being in charge of that today. Greatly appreciated. Restreamers make the world go around. It looks like uh, Red is on point and is about to wrap up Phase 1 here pretty soon with Magus, and then we're going to go into the Phase 2 Hyper Mash aggro section where we just unload as quickly and as, qu and as much as possible on Magus before he can get two Dark Matters off. And also, let's not be shy about saying we've got great runners who put themselves out here for this and uh, show the love. Give them some follows, people. Alright, Magus is risking casting a spell. Now you won't get the increased damage. You'll be back to normal spell damage. Basically, when uh, Masamune was giving him a weakness, you're getting not just normal, not just opening him to damage from your spell, but you're getting bonus damage. Once he risks casting a spell, it uh, resets to normal. By the way, 6,666 HP for Magus, just because I hadn't thrown that in yet. Yep. And as we can see, Halation resetting and reloading to get the RNG on point. Um, the way that we do that in this game, um, the RNG is affected by how long you're in the load screen. Um, where you have the three saves and you can load. So what we do is we wait for a specific amount of time in that menu until we and then load the save. Um, there are different amounts of time based on what specific RNG you're loading for. Uh, I believe for this it's 10? 10 beats? I can't remember. It's been a while. Um, I always have to do it because I'm always off RNG at this point. But um, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's a very tried and true way to get it set up. Um, some people like to use um, sprites that are set to certain beats to know the timing, and some people like to use um, metronomes to do it as well. They're both very valid and useful ways to do it. So Halation got thrown off a little bit there by not having the slasher equipped, which of course affects Chrono's speed and uh, had to reset the RNG accordingly. So we've got two of our runners just starting up the Magus fight, while in the middle, Magus has kneeled. Sub-150 Magus is really nice. That is a fantastic time. Yeah, make no mistake, Red Slash is bringing it. Had uh, some early slowdowns, but has executed very well. Yeah, very clean Magus Castle. I don't think I saw a single uh, hiccup in the entire castle. Well, the biggest thing story-wise we learned from the Magus fight is that he did not create Lavos. He was attempting to summon Lavos. He and just wanted a friend. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then we wake up from a dream and we'll find out we're back in the prehistoric area. Era. Area 2. Yeah, both works. <laughs> and then you get another input break here uh during this dream sequence you don't have you don't advance the text the text is automatically advanced so nice little uh bathroom break opportunity um it, it's nice how this game has a lot of the input free or the low input sections right in the middle of the run so you get good break points if you need it
So Noteworthy is... Magus is truly an epic boss. I mean, this is one of the most memorable RPG fights ever, in my opinion. But uh, now we're talking about there being... Eh, probably just under an hour left in the run. So, if you're familiar with the depth of Chrono Trigger, it kind of goes to show how much of the rest of the game we're skipping when you know that information. Yeah, we don't even lose Chrono. <laughs> like, it's it, it, it's in, it's intense how early on we fight Lavos, uh, considering everything that we don't have and could have. Uh, you know, you don't have... A couple things we're going to have to do, but we're going to need a Dactyl to do that. Yes. Ayla need Dactyl. I believe that's the correct terminology. So, by the way, we didn't highlight this when uh, Dark Matter comes up. Of course, it's a very strong black magic spell, but that's the power of the unequipped and the magic resistance is that we're able to take so little damage from Dark Matter. Otherwise, without it, it would easily kill everybody in the party at these levels. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that spell, that spell can wipe your party when you're playing this casually and are at the, like, quote-unquote correct levels, you know. So when you're as underpowered as the team is, the that that without unequip, oh my god, I wouldn't even you'd probably do double da double the total H eh, probably double the max HP for the characters with how low yeah. level they are. This dactyl nest, in my opinion, is probably the hardest spot in the game to learn your encounter skips for. Uh, first of all, there's not that many you can skip. Uh, you know, there's the easy stuff like the rebels here. Yeah, that's nothing. I mean, I barely even call that a skip, but yeah. I, I mean, they're like... just standing there and we just don't observe them. But, yeah. like, this one is tough. Yeah, that you're... Fred yeah. Slash makes it easy. Yeah, one pause buffer, lol. <laughs> Meanwhile, you and me would be sitting there for, like, five minutes trying to get it. And this one is really tough as well. Yeah, this one I had a lot of trouble with at first, but I found that if you get Chrono's foot on that little corner... Uh, like on the on the ground there's like a heart-ish shaped dark spot on the ground and on the bottom right there's like an actual like box corner if you get chrono's foot right on that corner and go straight up from there you usually get that skip but i have way more trouble with the the other one with the rock in the way that one always gets me and a good job to both halation and keech ketchum who have both cost magus to kneel and if you're wondering what i'm saying if you Pay attention, at the end of the fight, when you win against Magus, he kneels. He drops to one knee. So. And that's and that's the point at which, if we were doing a Magus percent race, that's the point that the fight would end, so that's why we... That's usually where you would split um, if you're doing a, a run as well. Well, with the Dactyls, we're able to go to Terreno, whichever this is, Fortress or Lair, who cares? I think it's Fortress. The monkeys are easy enough to skip there. Just oh yeah, they're not bad. Yeah. A lot of don't notice this enemy, and they won't notice you. Now we got a little menuing here uh, to get set up for the later fights. Um, both, um, well, I guess just Black Tyranno, but um, you know the other fights are more just getting set up than it is actual fighting. You know, we'll do a couple of grinds against um, a Reptite and a couple of Volcanoes to get ourselves to the right tech point levels. But other than that, we just pretty pretty much just glaze through this entire castle. There's a couple that we can't avoid. There's a lot we are trying to avoid, and then there is the one which is probably the most infamous random encounter of the game just because... It is so used across all variations of this of runs for this game. But first, rescue Kino. I mean, do we have to? Well, all you have to do is push a button. That's a lot of work, though. But no, because Ayla has to climb over. It's it's so much work. It's right there. It's right there on the wall. All you have to do is push the button. Eh, I guess. I mean. Fine, we'll save him. 
by pushing the button, right? Because it's just, it's right there. No, the button is, it's a trap. The oh, button, the button yeah. is a lie. The button is a lie. That's, that's how it goes. The cake is real, the button is a lie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ayla just wants to show off. That's really all this is about. She's like, see, Kino, you're weak because I can do this and you can't. Uh huh. Well, she has the epic scarf. He doesn't. True. Not to be confused with the tail, which many, 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 many people will confuse. Ayla does not have a tail. She's wearing a scarf. Yes. It's easier to see in the character art. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's definitely kind of confusing because she runs like a cat. So you're like, what? But yeah, no, no tail. All right, step on the button. You skip that fight close to the castle. You skip that fight. Just basically go left and you skip three fights there. Yeah, uh, I, I love that maze room. How you just like diagonally cut through it and you're just like, nope, bye. Then this is where it gets interesting. You've got to be on exactly the right spacing. I use little tiles on the floor to line up right. And uh, hey, Nisble. Nice Nisble. skip there by Halation. A couple of pause buffers, which is smooth. Goes right by the the stone. But yeah, see that that little corner there that I'm talking about on Halation screen. That's that makes that setup really nice. Uh, Chad would like to know why Ayla was named Jerry. Uh, that was named in honor of El Grand Jerry. So it was a specific meme. Community memes. So yeah, with uh, on red screen, this is uh, the section that we're going to do a little, a little, little baby grind. We'll do these to get. Um, we need. A specific tech in this next fight and we don't have it yet so we just need to get it um, so red's going to save here and then get into this fight and then we, we will earn one of the most important techs in the run using those techs wisely is a big factor in it so the game tries to well it does have this mechanic of counterattacking. And if the dino dude kicks the volcano, it'll counterattack you. But if you attack the volcanoes, it counterattacks its own team. So by using Cyclone, we do damage to all of them, and we trigger the volcano counterattack, which is enough to finish them off in what effectively is one attack. This next section is very critical. Uh, there's a couple things they're skipping on the easier side. But then you have to be extremely precise to avoid two unrunnable encounters here. And that's a time loss you don't want. Basically, you want Chrono's head to be perfectly in line with that uh, door frame post on the right side. I use the little patterns on the ground to line that up. Yep, the tiling kind of lines up perfectly so you can see this like pseudo darkened like line that you can perfectly line Chrono's head up for. But yeah, that's a very tight... A squeeze and you definitely don't want to get into that fight because that's that's a two-part fight you fight one of the dinos and then you fight two of the dinos and you can't you can't get around it so yeah and that's the big megasaurs it's not even a quick fight and here we are with the tyranno and the tyranno has 10,500 hp we're moving up sig significantly here Nisbol, who we didn't fight, only has 6,500, by the way, so actually less than Magus. Which makes sense. I mean, you've got another fight right after it, so you don't want to... You don't want to drain the people too much with a bunch of bosses in a row. This is a really intense section of the game, casually. So you have a huge dungeon with a bunch of bosses, followed by another huge dungeon with a bunch of bosses. So, like, they, they cool you down with the whole frog backstory right before the castle and then, then they just throw you right into the deep end. And there's stuff you can do casually to uh, break this up, but obviously we're not doing that in this speed run. But like, there's new equipment that you can get from the trading hut, things like that. 
Azala we have to be careful of, and the Tyranno is not lower to defense yet, so you can't do very much damage to the Tyranno right now. Yeah, it's it's not really worth worth it to to even do it. I um, mean, we we have Ayla on Berserk, you know, because again, like we explained earlier, she's it's it's so beneficial to have your strongest hitter with Berserk on because it just makes it so much faster. Um, but yeah, so Ayla hitting BT is not a huge deal, but because um, she's her Berserker stuff is for after Azela is defeated. Um, yeah, the, the spin cut ice sword tech here is so important to this fight. Um, and spin cut is so important to the speedrun in general because pretty much every dual tech we use past this point involves spin cut for the most point. For the most part, words. And there goes the Zala down. And then it's just a race now uh, between finishing off BT before it can get off enough fire uh, attacks to wipe the party. Yeah, this Durano is capable of uh, putting out the damage input, of course, the when he decides he's hungry and has a snack. That's pretty annoying. Yeah, and it's it, we actually take advantage of that by um, only allowing him to eat people with low HP so that they don't... he doesn't get more HP back from the eating. Which is obviously key as this is a very tight fight considering like like how much hp he has yeah we don't buy all those revives just as a backup they're important for this as well both this time and the second time yeah fight looking pretty smooth right now for red uh just going on track again it's a long fight because of how how little damage we're doing to it and how much HP it has, but you know, we'll get there. Don't worry, guys. Meanwhile, um, Palatian is coming up on the skip. Nicely done. And it looks like Keat is about to do the Nisbil skip. Yeah, getting the. Uh... Getting or, the... I, oh, never mind. Already yeah, done. All the runners did the skip first and then did the grind. Gotcha. No, yeah, I missed I missed the uh I missed the Nisbel on Keith's screen. Well, there's a lot going on. A little bit. So watch one of these runs, but three of them at the same time. <laughs> That's fine. Here we go, Keith lining it up. Perfect. I'm about to have all three runners on this fight, I believe. Red might sneak this out before Keat can get started, but definitely very close. Well, they'll at least have a handoff on the same fight. Sure. Okay, you know what? He's not going to be off on the Dactyls, at least. That's good. That is good. Because we'll get to have a nice long section of epic battle. I do wonder how structurally sound this castle has to be to be able to support the weight of this monstrous T-Rex on the edge of this precipice. Well, you're making a big assumption in there. <laughs> uh, by the way, Chad would like to know what kind of run this is. This is any percent no lava shell skip. So, we are rapidly approaching... Well, I mean, we are non-stop from this point on. We are always doing something that's putting us closer to the run. I mean, it's a speed run. We're doing that from the beginning anyways. But you see it reduced to just the exact necessary elements here. And you'll see a lot of game not played. Yeah, this is pretty much the end of where we follow the story. After this fight, we're just going to go grab a couple of essential accessories and uh, weapons and then go fight Ret Knight to get the last couple of bits of XP and TP we need to have the right text for the Lavos shell rush, and then we'll be on our way. 
There you go. That was a much better way to say it. <laughs> That's why they got a got a team. Now. Now. Nice. GG's red. Yeah, a long a long fight. It really tests your patience and your ability to uh, do your menuing as quickly as possible. But yeah, the, this is a nice tight race. We still have you know we still have anybody's game at this point for sure. Um, By the way, noteworthy that although we're killing Azala first, that is not a requirement for the Tyranno to lower defense. No, yeah, you can you can just wait it out, but. Um, it's certainly faster, and then you don't have to deal with Azala doing all these extra attacks, slowing down the fight even more. So, yeah, that's just something the speedrun does to make life better. A lot of revives going on, you're just gonna do that, that way Torino's not getting the healing, which we don't want. Yeah, ideally they would be even lower HP if we could get it that low, but, you know, 50 is not a lot, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it looks like Keat lost RNG at some point, unfortunately, as Marl is, um, is down a little early, so. Worst comes to worst, just make sure somebody has enough HP to survive you can revive keep going but yeah a anytime you mess up your RNG it's gonna hurt yeah this fight is especially notorious about that because you know th this is one of the few fights that has a r that the like big attack is actually really harmful to the characters because you know like we said with Magus yeah he has dark matter but you know, it does like 30, 40 damage to each character, but like with the with the like countdown flame attack that Black Tyranno does, easy party wipe, since the unequipped glitch doesn't affect the fire ma magic resistance at all. By the way, can I just point out that Ayla claims to invent the term Lavos after she already heard it from us? Yes. I mean, to be fair, so. Okay. As long as that's on the record. Yep, it, it's circular logic, it's fine. So we have a new gate! And this gate... ...is gonna put us in the Dark Ages, as they are called in this game. It's gonna bring us to Red's favorite music in the game. The Snowfield. Yeah, this is... This is the point in the run where we start to go off the tracks of the story. Um, you know, we're going to grab a few things here. We're going to talk to the sapling lady. And then we're just going to run up to the palace and open the door. Doors are important. Especially when they're preventing us from getting further in the run. We're going to need that nice charged up pendant. Yep, so we can get some goodies before we fight Lavos, since Ooh, the swallow is very reset. important. Kate had to take the resets. That's going to yeah. be a time loss. And that was back before Nisbul, too. So I think this is going to be Nisbul skip and then the grind again. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of doing the... The grind before the skip is if you're if you're a newer runner and still are having trouble with the RNG, it saves you a little bit of time on the on the back end if you have to do restarts. But you know, obviously, a more seasoned runner might try the faster strat. Nice, Salation wrapping up the fight. Good job, Salation and Plant Lady is going to plant it secretly. She was given a plant by the Guru of Reason who said it had the power to help the environment, so she, who loves plants, will plant it and try to protect it safely. The Queen ordered it burned for reasons. I guess she just hates plants. 
It was nicer than the plant she had, so she wanted it destroyed. It was making her look bad. Yeah, that sounds legit. A more realistic explanation is that she's just anti the gurus, and since the guru is the one responsible for the plant, she wanted it destroyed because gurus are bad. But I like my first explanation better. I believe it. Alright, we get Scala demonstrating how you go through doors. Open Sesame Strats learned. And you do not have to talk to that new. You can just walk behind him, but it's a little bit... He's a little clunky. Yeah, he's got a weird, uh, like, not hitbox, because that's the wrong term, but, you know, his the, his sprite box, so to speak, is yeah. kind of chonky, so... He is a chonker. That's the word I was looking for. Alright, Keith versus the Trano, round two. Let's go. Door is opened, and if Luca is there, she claims it was by the power of science, which is weird since absolutely no science was involved. <laughs> no science was used in the making of this section. Except magic science. Alright, now we got a really tough fight for Red here. Um, this fight can go really bad really quickly, so hopefully he can finish it really well. Starting out good speed for this uh, gallon, by the way. Oh, oh, that's a problem. That's a problem. All right, that's okay. Oh no, no, yeah, yeah it's really bad. Yeah, I don't know if he might have to reset here. Might not Let's make see. it. Oh uh, crap. Oh uh, yeah, that's too bad. Uh, oh well, well that's that's a tough one for Red to take, but oh never mind, never mind. We don't have to fight that guy. My bad. I forgot. Yeah, that boss fight is uh, is uh, winning it is option. You will get in the fight, but you can lose it. And in fact, for speedrun purposes, it's faster to lose. It's actually really uh, it's nice because we get to set up our memory menus for the Retinite fights in that fight. That's what you were seeing Red doing in his menus there. Um, before each character died, he was setting their tech to be set to whatever uh, specific attack he wants to do for the Retinite fight in, you know, well, like five, ten minutes from now, roughly. Just gotta grab some stuff first. Alright, so, obviously, there's gonna be a bunch of text boxes, but generally speaking, things are moving pretty fast and furious now. It looks like Keith's having a much better time with Brock Tyranno on this go around. Which is good. Red is getting banned from Zeal. Shawler yeah. dropping the ban hammer. Or the ban triangle. What is that? What is that geometric shape called? Pyramid. That's probably the right word. <laughs> pyramid. Dropping the pyramid hammer. So once uh, Tyranno's out of the way, once we finish there, of course the game wants you to go on and do the Epoch. But we don't really need him. As much as we yeah. love him, we don't really need him. It's a suggestion. <laughs> Red got banned for going too fast. He didn't obey the speed limits in uh, Zeo Kingdom. Yeah, the Magus wasn't a fan. He's like, hey, I wasn't allowed to run like that when I was a kid, so you guys are out of here. Alright, time for Halation to get a demonstration of how to go through a door. Because that's very important. We have to learn how to go through doors. Uh, once we're going to go back to the prehistoric era, and what's nice about it now is you don't have the busy fight anymore. The uh, the dancing koalas are gone there. Yeah, the meteor kind of ruined everybody. 
or Lavos rather, kind of wrecked everybody's. Uh, although, if you actually talk to NPCs after you've returned from Zeal, they actually talk about how it's getting colder and how the animals aren't there aren't as many of them. They aren't seeing them as much. Hunting's getting more difficult. So they actually cover that in the game and explain that properly, which is cool. There's a lot of that kind of stuff where there are impacts as you do things, and the game really does explain them. And you will see entirely different dialogues as different story triggers have happened, so it's a good thing to check out casually if you've never done it, just for fun. Yeah, the next time you pick this game up casually, Talk to the NPCs that you don't really need to talk to, because you'd be surprised how many of them actually get new dialogue uh, after certain story triggers happen. But Red picking up the Swallow, which is very important as it gives another uh, a boost of speed. Uh, the Swallow gives plus three to your speed, so that's one extra than the Slasher, which gives you a plus two. So Chrono is going super fast now. It's also like his second or third best sword he can possibly get in the game, and we just get it there for free. Yep, exactly. And uh, round two goes to the golem. That golem, he is always a tricky one. Red's got the final bird skip coming up. And there it goes. Buttery smooth. They've done that so well today. And it looks like Halation is just about ready to get banned. And I think Keats just about to wrap up. Uh, Black Trano. Definitely had a better fight going on that time. Yep, there it is. Yeah, GG. Got his revenge. Now we are seeing the uh, sunken desert here. We need to complete this side quest, in particular to obtain one item. And of course that item is very critical to the run. We'll talk about it once we get it. Now this section is very hard. The the menuing is super precise, and if you're off by even a little bit, then you won't be able to do the Ret Knight boss fight, and you'll have to reset and do all these fights all over again. Uh, this is a very frustrating section of the game to learn because of that, but at the same time, like once you start learning it, it, it it's not as bad once you get the Nestle memory set. Um, but it looks like Red's good. Yes, yep. Red is good, so he can move on to the next fight. Chat says Sir Crawley's everywhere, and I have to ask, who's Sir Crawley? We haven't seen a Sir Crawley. <laughs> There's no Sir Crawley in any percent no LSS. He, only in the all bosses run. That doesn't exist. That needs to exist. Hondo is basically all bosses anyways, so... And there's not much of a difference between all bosses and Hundo. That is it. So Halation is going to finish business in prehistory and get back to present times. And past and future, but mainly present. Yep. And meanwhile, Lavos is destroying the Reptite community over on Keith's side. They had it coming. They were asking for it. How dare they steal our gate key? Oh, that was a while ago. Yeah, but we're in Vindictive Bunch, so. But this one was over the noise. They were bad neighbors. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They kept ignoring all the noise complaints. All right, and Red's keyed up, ready to go for Ret Night now. Got through all those fights nice and smooth. Palatians on the way to grabbing their swallow, and Keats about to head into antiquity time. For Red Knight, you've got 5,000 HP on the upper body, 
4,800 for the legs. Of course, it ends up being a little bit more than that with the healing. Now, one thing people don't realize in this room, every time Retinite comes up out of the ground and you don't interact with his his sprite to boss fight, you actually take damage. Um, so if you're learning this run and you are having trouble getting to Retinite fast enough, you'll actually have less HP than you need to survive some of the later parts of the fight. So it's it's very essential that you get Retinite the first time he pops up so you don't take too much damage. But what we're doing in this fight is basically using Marl's ice to weaken the Retinite parts, starting with the legs um, and then working our way up to the top. We want to make sure that we are not doing anything to the core. Um, and we're also making sure that we're doing our inputs when the characters are attacking so that we don't throw the RNG off because Retinite can very easily screw up this fight by putting darkness on the wrong person or eating somebody and regaining too much health, throwing off the attack values, etc. Um, but it looks like it's going so far so good. Now the core is easy to kill. It's the easiest thing to kill. But then he goes crazy, and you don't want that. And he basically, it's like... It's very similar to what happens with the Mother Brain fight, where if you take out all of her uh, monitors, she goes berserk, basically. And the same, same thing with Ret Knight. You really don't want to do anything to the core until the absolute end of the fight. All right, inhalation working through the desert now. And Keith's still working on getting banned, coming up to the Golem fight. Should be wrapping up the legs on Retinite right now. Yep, there we go. And, and the world record would be 24 minutes from now. Just as uh, a... Yeah, just... So, it, it, honestly, it's pretty good pace, all things considered, right now. There's not much left after this fight. Um, Halation starting up on the gauntlet in the desert. Things looking good. Yep. On point, so he can move on to the next section. And we do we do these fights because we need to get um the tech itself both for the fight upcoming Retinite and then as well for the boss rush coming up before Lavos. It's a pretty strong uh, solo attack, but it's also the key for dual tech of Falcon Hit, which, as you may recall, we just got Chrono an upgraded sword, and uh, it happens to work mainly off of Chrono's stack power. So, pretty big deal. It's yeah, like Halation getting the uh, getting the trip up that I was talking about earlier. It doesn't take much, and if you have even the slightest error here, you have to start over um, the whole thing, because you need the RNG to be on point, or you won't be able to survive the Retinite fight, or you might have the Retinite fight go wrong and you lose the uh, core, because the core can run away, and if you don't get that, the tech points from that, you're going to have to grind some tech points to get everybody at the right uh, levels and, t and everything. It's a uh pretty significant amount and unfortunately in this route we just don't see the great tech point uh, fights like we don't get the rebels at all the things that are a really high amount right yeah you you know because we just don't even get to a mountain of woe because that section actually has a lot of really good um fights for tp in, 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 not even including the rubble but like you know just there are some fights there's like five or six enemies on screen and you know you get a buttload of tp for those so it's a very advantageous section for getting yourself to a, to the right levels for sure but that's kind of by design because of how difficult giga Gaia is as a boss fight um you kind of need those you need to be boosted up to be able to keep up with the speed of those double hand attacks that they have at the start 
Yeah, I'd say they basically designed it as to be sort of foolproof to make sure you get Falcon hit. That really makes that fight. Oh yeah, Falcon hit makes that fight trivial. Uh, I was I I was always lucky learning when I you know started this game casually all the, all those years ago, having my team be Chrono Ala Robo the whole time. I had no issues with that fight. Let me put it that way. I wasn't big on the double techs. I kind of went uh, Glenn Chrono Magus. That's a pretty popular team for people who are first playing the game. You know, Glenn's probably one of the most popular characters in the game, period. And then Magus is, you know, obviously got a huge base of fans, so not surprising. I suppose when you think about it, those are the two most developed characters. Like, it really gives you their backstory in both cases. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Marl's probably the next closest character for in terms of, like, real character development, but it's, like, her stuff is, like, piecemeal throughout the game in little chunks. Meanwhile, like, Magus and Glenn get these, like, long expositions that explain a ton of their backstory, so... Totally understandable. All right, so we are getting a couple of elixirs, which are pretty important to the sake of the run. Oh, we got a question in chat. Darth Wally asking about Chrono Cross Miguel. That's just basically a, a midway point through the run, because uh, Chrono Cross's run is so much longer than the other two runs. It's just going to give give you guys in chat a better understanding of like where everybody is, you know, uh, in terms of like the race. So... Well, the forest has been restored, or created, or whatever we're calling it. And Robo, who stayed behind in the Middle Ages, is now returned to our party. And has to be fixed up and brought back online. Yeah, yeah. Luca's, Luca's got, like, a crash course in repairing futuristic robots that she doesn't have any of the tech for. As you do. Pretty much. Although it's not really fixing this time, it's more like oiling all the joints and cleaning up all the gunk that's a, a, that's built up. You know, it's not like he powered, he couldn't work anymore and they just powered him down once he was done. Because he's like, you guys are boring. I miss my friends. I'm going to go to sleep. See ya. Well, I mean, you'd think he'd learn how to do some of that himself. Well, yeah, but he's got to he's got to let Luca do it because Luca loves doing it. He's an enabler. A lot of them is. Which <laughs> way? All right, uh, we're gonna see Keith get the swallow here. Uh, Cutscene wise, what we're seeing is Luca remembering what got her into understanding machines and whatnot, and there was this tragic accident when she was a kid. So, we will see that play out in just a moment here. This is the sequel to Chrono Trigger. Um, it's it's not a true sequel in a gameplay sense, or in a, um, like, taking what happened from Chrono Trigger and, like, advancing on it. It's a isolated story that occurs in the Chronoverse, and the connections to Chrono Trigger don't become clear until the very, very end of the game. Um, unless you're paying a lot of attention um, and really looking for the connections, but um, it's definitely worth playing for anybody who's played Chrono Trigger. Absolutely. Alright, so Taven set up this big machine in his house for reasons, and then his wife got her dress caught in it. So, we need to save her, but as a kid, Luca didn't know what to do. And we as a player don't know what to do until we read the pages but uh, that would take more time. We already know the password. One cute little thing about this game with passwords is you can actually hold in all the buttons and it'll just register the inputs in the correct sequence. So like for the XABY password in the factory, you could just hold all four buttons and it will enter XABY in the order for you. And you do the same thing for this, uh, for Lara. So you just hold LRNA and it'll go LARA for you and bingo. So we save the legs of 
Luca's mom, and now if you interact with her, she'll actually be walking around. But more importantly, to the sake of the speedrun, we pick up an item called the Green Dream. Now, what does the Green Dream do for us? It makes us break the game wide open, basically. Um, normally, what the Green Dream's actual ability is, is one-time auto-revive on the character it's equipped to. But we use this, and by doing having the revive happen in certain sequences, we can actually trick the game into allowing us to use items on enemies that we wouldn't normally be allowed to do. Uh, we'll explain it a little bit more in a second, um, once we get to the actual elixir glitch parts, because uh, Red has a little bit left to do before we do that, but because uh, we got the boss rush first. And um, there's only bosses in which it's going to be helpful others we're still going to have to do our damage to yes now red is coming across the bane of this run the lavos boss rush is easily the most difficult section of this run and is very f famous for killing runs very efficiently um there the the rng is incredibly tight um, and if you're off it even by a little, then the actual fight with Lavos will be impossible to complete, and you will just have to start over. You're so you're so under leveled that you have to have the script go exact, or Lavos just wipes you completely. All right, so we get the Lavos scene, which is, you know, I suppose casually it'd be about the third or fourth time you'd see it theoretically. But uh, we are at the day of Lavos. Lavos has emerged. And we must fight the various forms. He will take the form of some of the bosses. So this first one will be a repeat of the dragon tank. And when he mimics, he really mimics. It's right down to the HP. Yeah, it's it, it's not like they raise the stats to match your level or anything like that. Like, nope, this is just a literal cookie, cookie cutter clone replacement of the original boss fight. So the first... You know, like, most of these fights go pretty easily, but, again, like, you have to be on the RNG properly, or it's just not going to go well against Lavos himself. Now, that does mean it's the first time we do a couple of these fights, because while he starts with Dragon Tank, we're going to see Hecron for the first time, Zombor the first time. Uh, first time. And Giga Gaia will be in this as well. Meanwhile, we've got Keat about to do the final encounter before Ret Knight, and we've got Halation about to head to Lavos Land. That doesn't sound very fun. I mean, that depends on what you like as fun. If you're all about watching apocalypses happen, then Lavos Land is the land for you. You don't have much cake in an apocalypse scenario, so I'm not sure that'd be for me. That's a fair that's a fair assessment for sure. I bet that's more of a place that has buttons. And we all know the buttons are a lie. Yeah, yes. Mm hmm It's it's all it's all circular. It all comes back together. Red Knight versus Keat. Looking for a good fight here. One of the crucial things to the Ret Knight fight is making sure you do your inputs during the attack animations and not outside of them. Um, it, it It's probably the tightest fight in terms of that kind of stuff, besides maybe the actual Lavos fight itself. The Lavos shell fight, rather. Here's another thing that's easy to miss, depending on how you've played the game. There's a couple of these scenes that are designed for interaction with Marley and her father, and the Chancellor's involved as well. So, it, it's it got a story purpose, so I'm not going to go into it for spoiler reasons, just in case there is one or two people out there who still haven't played this game. But uh, that's a fun little side quest that's going on that you can experience. But we see that extra dialogue because we want uh, the elixirs out of the castle. Yeah, those elixirs are very obviously crucial. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to finish the run. We need those elixirs to do elixir glitch. 
It's right there in the name. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Easy peasy. So Can we are having a good time. We're about to get to the final forms of Lavos. Can we get some hype in this chat? Yeah, are you guys ready to see some Elixir Glitch? This is what we've been building to for the last two hours. He is getting close to wrapping up the legs. I believe he's got one more round of attacks to finish it off, if I'm counting correctly. Oh, oh okay, I guess not. I guess he must be off. He has the lightning, the core. He must have had a, a, a mix-up there. Oh, no, okay, there is. All right, I see. I see what happened. Never mind. Um, Yeah, and then we've got the... Campfire scene. Yeah, we got campfire going on with Hellation. It's quite the mix of scenes. The Red Knight, the Lavos, and the Campfire. Pretty much every part of the spectrum here. Falcon hit away. Very nice damage. My fave. Like Falcon hit and Bolt Bite. I just spam those all the time when I play this game casually. Yeah, red, red is putting on a blistering pace right now. This is intense. It's just been so consistent. There was the one early hiccup, but been phenomenal since then, right on route. And of course, it does not end here because Radical Tree Force is up next. Yep, and again, uh, I really recommend everybody to check out Radical Dreamers. It's such a fun game, and it's really accessible. Um, and again, it's it's it ties into both games, both Cross and Trigger, so it's definitely worth it if you're a fan of the series or, and the lore. And you don't even have to push a button to watch, because you're already here. Exactly. You won't even have to refresh. Magus fight form of Lavos here. This is the this part of the fight in the shell is uh, where I lose RNG a lot. Um, I have I personally can have trouble with the last couple of attacks and getting them in in the right time there it's very the inputs are very tight and specific for this fight uh, that's a great point in chat that i want to highlight andy has mentioned that the uh, chrono games all really share the same discord and that is also true for routes of the games so even if you want to speed run a different category of chrono trigger all the stuff you could ask for is in one place and there's a number of great people who can help you out Yes, Darth. All the runs are any percent, except for Chrono Trigger, which is no LSS. But, you know, besides Lavo Shell Skip, it's as virtually in any percent as it can be. You know, the, the, the major difference is just skipping this Shell Rush. But this is just so iconic for the game. It, it's hard to not give it its due. Yeah, Shell Skip is also tough to do in a marathon setting because there's no, it's not like reliable you know you don't want to have a relay where you have everybody resetting a bunch trying to get the shell skip to hit although knowing knowing these runners it'd probably be first try for all three of them <laughs> uh, meanwhile keat has gotten through the red knight fight and going on to the campfire and we have the emergence of the Lavos. I also like how Lavos politely doesn't annihilate the world when when the team goes to fight him. Like he just focuses on them instead of just screwing everybody over. Very very considerate of Lavos, and I appreciate that. 
Well, he needs time to do his spell chant, and we're interrupting the spell oh, chant. Oh, I see. So we're playing FF4 now. Got it. Makes sense. Lavos is zero misconfirmed. I don't know that I want to insult Lavos like that. <laughs> now, both the both quite the epic boss fight. Oh, that's a good question, Jerry. I do not know. Hmm. I've never paid attention to Colonel's level at this part. His speed obviously wouldn't change. Uh, it'd be a question, I guess, of does he get enough damage from the yeah. swallow that it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm curious. I wonder if he can get the Black Tyranno fight done fast enough before the second fire. I think that's really the only main concern. Because if he gets the second fire off, then, then you're dead. But I also wonder if he could get backup power tabs. I don't think there'd be any that would be convenient, though. Nah, no, not at this point. You'd be... I think the closest one would be, like... Uh... Could, the could one in the castle, maybe? Anyways. Yeah. You'd get strength of one level anyway, so you wouldn't need too much, because things... Nah, I forget the... Never mind. Yeah, Never mind. I'd have to know the level progression breakdown to really know how much you'd need. So meanwhile, two of our runners now on Lavos, and Key Ketchum is not going to be far behind. Just got to wrap up the uh, campfire, and then we'll be on to the grinding through the bosses. Meanwhile, looks like Red is pretty close to wrapping up the first uh, fire phase. And Hecran phase for Halation. So Halation's not too far behind Red right now. So any, any slip up here can definitely flip the uh, script. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, Red finishes up BT between these fights so if you got off script in a bad way uh, you're not going to have a save till inner lavas yeah and at that point that's you know <laughs> that's not going to help so for the third time we need to go save Luca's mom need to. We want to, but we don't need to. You can theoretically not save her and still get the green dream and everything you need, so... Yes, yeah, so you'll if, get the green dream either way, but it's longer, and this is a speed run. Exactly. And plus, like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to? Well, I don't know. We don't save Fritz. Yeah, but Fritz is a guy who doesn't matter. This is an, it, this is an important character. Fritz is Fritz. Eh. Eh. But he's a nice dude. He gives us mid ethers. <laughs> Is he really a nice dude, though? I question whether or not he was actually a pirate or not. Well, I mean, first of all, we know this Chancellor's track record. <laughs> he gets for execution for walking around with the girl. I mean. Well, I like to personally think that because they went back in time and did all that, that. The Chancellor actually knows Chrono from, like, stories of who defeated Yakra. So he actually has a personal vendetta against Chrono. That's my personal headcanon. Well, it's not headcanon. He says it directly. <laughs> he, he literally says during the fight, heard all about it from the ancestors. Yep. And Red is in the Falcon hit spam section of the, of the boss rush. And it looks like uh, true lava shell time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yep. And Halation in Nisbal. 
And we've got Keat on their way to the, sh the shell. Alright, so... Lavos comes out firing. Rip Marley. Green Dream does its thing. Now, the reason to not do an elixir against Lavo Shell is it doesn't have enough HP. Yes, uh... Why don't you talk about the... Yeah, sure. sure. So, Elixir Glitch works by, uh, as I said before, Green Dream we use in a way that tricks the game into allowing you to use items on enemies, which normally you can't do in Chrono Trigger. You're not allowed to... But you can't even target enemies when you use items. Um, but it... The way that that works allows us to use elixirs on bosses. And since the game doesn't understand why that happens, uh, it tries to give the boss more HP than it can have, which overflows it and then rolls it into negatives and then kills it. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. But to, to have that work, you need to have the boss reach a certain HP level, which I believe is 32k, but I could be wrong on that number, um, to roll over properly. So you can't do it on any boss. The boss has to reach that certain value HP-wise to be able to do it. So uh, if I recall correctly, there's only three bosses in the game that you could properly elixir glitch. Um, the two last phases of Lavos and the Mammon Machine. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. But... The interlocals has 20,000. I think the cutoff is actually 13,000. Oh, okay. My apologies. Uh, yeah, I, I, I haven't looked into the numbers in a long time. Real fast. Uh, 16,383. Okay. There we uh, go. So I was thinking of the 32 because that's the rollover number. So like once it hits that 32,000, that's when the that's when the numbers roll over. So that's why. Okay, that makes sense. Like I said, it's been a while since I looked at the numbers, so thanks for looking them up. No problem. I, I had that open, so I'd be ready on a couple of talking points, and uh, that was one of them. Inner Lavos, uh, I'm sorry, Lavo Shell is defeated for Red Slash, and we are getting down to it. Yeah, be sure to give the all the everybody a follow. The runners, restream. My fellow commentator, everybody deserves it. We we all we're all a tight knit, really close community, and it's it's really fun. I love hanging out in all these different streams. We all have a great time together. So join us. We've it's gonna be enjoyable. Today. We hope you've had fun as well, chat. And uh, here we go. It's Lavos time. It's a, the the one thing that stinks about Elixir Glitch is that we don't get to listen to these bangers of, of tracks that Mitsuda-san gave us for the final bosses. It's actually my ringtone, uh, World Revolution. I trimmed it down to the trumpet part, and uh, that's my ringtone. That's a pretty solid ringtone, I'm not going to lie. Lavos comes out firing. Obviously, that damage is going to be off the charts. Green Dream does its thing. Slightly more than max HP possible, but you know, whatever. And trivial details. So we. Oh! Just a bit too slow on the menu input there, it looked like. I don't think he was off the RNG, but that is unfortunate. Um, it You have to be very quick about the input that you do. Frog's ATB needs into needs to be in a place where you can get into the item menu before Lavos gets his next turn because he will definitely kill Frog with any attack he uses and it's I'm pretty sure it's always that double scythe attack um if you end up missing it there um yeah no that was that was not supposed to happen unfortunately um if if he got it right, he would have been able to target Lavos with the with an elixir and would have killed him immediately. So we'll see if he can get it in this time. 
the good news is because of that save point being right before the boss, you're able to get back to this very quickly. Yep, and then Red doing a backup here, switching Ayla and Frog. Um, this allows the the backup for the Elixir glitch is uh, has to have Frog in a different spot for it to work properly. Otherwise, Lavos is going to target the wrong people. But there you go. Uh, second try, GG's. Nothing yeah, defeated. As you can see, the, the numerical values there were all zeros green um, when it showed on there. Um, but yeah, the that that was that was very well done that time. I, again, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I don't think Red was off RNG, so I don't think that was the problem. I think it was just the input was a little too late because you have to be really quick with that. Um, and also, I, I, again, I don't think it was the ATB, but it could have been. Yeah, also bear in mind, they're going to play at the highest battle speed they can because... Yep speed run but uh, that's of course running on the knife's edge you're gonna have lower time to react to everything that's the trade-off uh grumpy tiger yes elixir, elixir glitch is an overflow glitch for sure that's exactly how it works um in terms of like how it kills them all right, right and then we yeah last last fight so we're gonna have lavos Right, attack Ayla, and then Frog input to uh, keep his RNG in spot so his ATB loads in the right place. We'll have Chrono go into the item menu, um, and then, yep, yeah, the ATB's in a good spot here. So again, as long as just up X up, and then a right over to the right one. And there we go. And GG, Red Slash completes... First leg of the run for Team Ozzy. Let's see all the GG's chat. As we also see the start of Radical Dreamers coming for Team Ozzy. Uh, there was a question in chat I wanted to address that he didn't menu in between. You can actually open up the menu before Lavo's core, but they don't want to heal here. Yeah, there you can save a very small amount of time by going into the menu and then immediately closing it by holding start and B. Um, that strat's more used in New Game Plus where, like, sh you know, slivers of seconds are very important. You can do it in these runs, but it's not as it's not as crucial, you know, for, like, a two-and-a-half, three-hour run that Crown Trigger is. And it looks like we are... We switched right in, and Radical Dreamers is running. Meanwhile, it looks like, yep, Halation's in the last phase of the Giga Gaia fight, and ah, okay, Zonbor for Keith. If we didn't specifically mention this, uh, each game is going to have its dedicated commentary team, so we'll be handing this off once uh, Chrono Trigger wraps up here. So I'll say for my part, this has been a blast. Uh, thank you, RPG Limit Break, and everybody involved in the relay for having me. And thank you, Chad, for joining us. Hope it's been a good Saturday morning for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, over over 1K viewers, like, thank you guys so much for the support. Um, you know, we're, we're a smaller community, but we're definitely welcoming anybody and everybody that wants to join us. So, you know, uh, thanks to all the runners. Um, you guys put on a great show, you know, and thanks to, again, thanks to all the guys behind the scenes. Uh, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to be showcasing this stuff for the, for the masses. So thanks again to all of you, um, helping us out on that end as well. Uh, Jerry, do we have you joining us? I am here. Uh, any thoughts about this one here? It was a great... Great Chrono Trigger race. Red Sash went way faster and I had to set up uh, really quickly. He went way faster than expected. That time for a marathon is extremely impressive. And yeah, Keith and Halloween are also doing great. Yeah, just imagine if he had gotten Elixir Glitch first try, it's probably going to be a <laughs> sub 250, which is yep. insane for a marathon run. Like, that's, that's why we call Red, you know, the entity, because he's, you know, 
he can just pull it out whenever he wants. And it's just easy. Yeah, he's scary consistent. All right. Thank you, Jerry. And good luck with the run here. All right. So more battles against the Lavo Shell. We've got uh, both of them on it. Uh, chat would like to know world record. That's a 247 right now. Uh, Vanus currently owns that. And he's held it for a while. I think he's yeah, had there's... There was a time there where like that that record was getting chipped down for for a bit, but it's been it's been a while, yeah. Like you say, I think it's been almost a year now since that has been uh, set. All right, true Lavo shell there. Uh, for halation that is. Having to deal with it with Chrono and Ayla. They got this. They got this covered. Marley, yeah. she can take a nap. It's been a long run. It's been very exhausting. She did her part. She's the hasty girl. She contributed so much to the run. I mean, all of the, all the stuff and things she did. Yeah, she's very crucial to this run. Um, you know, not so, not as much as Chrono and Ayla are, but she's definitely right up there in terms of importance. You know, she has a lot of very crucial parts to play in this run. And without her, we certainly wouldn't be able to take care of this boss rush because haste is so crucial in getting enough damage in before the big attacks happen. And yeah. there we go. Shell down. So let's see if Halation can get first try uh, Elixir Glitches. Yeah, this Haste Strats let Chrono get a lot of attacks off. And uh, it's one of my favorite things the Glitchless run does is there's a couple of bosses that you beat with those Haste Strats and it's just delightful. I the like berserker haste strats are like some of my most fun strats to be doing uh meanwhile jerry is you know plowing through uh the, the beginning of radical dreamers and the uh beginning of the run is pretty straightforward for my memory's sake uh the the middle of the run is where most of the slip ups can occur cuz the combat's really uh, the the most difficult part about the run because, of course, uh, the rest of it is just picking which which correct text box to select. We'll be explaining it more in detail, but basically there's a lot of random encounters. So uh, it's the RNG that kills this run, as you said, with the combat. But we can actually we can get very lucky or we can get completely destroyed. We have Inner Lavos up now for Halation. Here we go with the Elixir Glitch. He's got it. First try. And moving on. Notice, notice how lo how Frog is in the second player slot here. Um, you know, again, it's it, it, the character's position is just as essential as like their speed, their ATV, all that. Like, if you tried to do the elixir glitch with Frog in a different slot, it's not going to work. He has to be in the right slot as well. It's so complicated. There's so much nuance to that glitch that you don't really think about when you see it because it just looks like you're just using the elixir but you know, there's so much setup that needs it to be right for it to work otherwise you'll have what happened with red where you'll either die after you get revived or you it won't let you uh target because you're you know in the wrong menu All right, time for the final battle here with Lavo Score for Relation. Meanwhile, Keat is just about to wrap up BT. He's got the few last Falcon hits to wrap up that fight. And then they'll be moving on to Gigagaya in the much loved falcon hit spam section of the room there's the green dream and 
and did not get it. It uh, I think he mismenued and got the elixir on center. Lavos. Yeah, he he didn't go right. He did up. Didn't do. He didn't do upright. He did up. Unfortunate, because you have to do both of them again. This is definitely a frustrating wall for runners um, because you have to get both elixir glitches correct, and they aren't the exact same in terms of how you do the inputs. So, because you know the first one, you do the center. And then the second one you do the right for. So there's just, you know, a little bit of difference muscle memory wise. So it's easy to kind of, like, I, I find myself sometimes when I'm about to do the menu, I kind of wait, like, a hesitation, so to speak. And, like, that can cost you the glitch if you hesitate. So. You know, that's a great point in chat is uh, Lation did not have as much prep time for this. He jumped in here and has done a. Fantastic job. Yeah, the, originally Avonis was going to be Team Flea's Chrono Trigger Runner, but there was a little bit of a, a issue, so we had to sub Halation in pretty much last minute. So, you know, thanks so much, A, for joining the relay on such short notice with, you know, as little prep with a game that is very execution heavy, and also just GG's on doing so well with so little practice. Um, I... I, I couldn't imagine jumping into this run after not playing it for a, an amount of time. So, um, you know, just that it, mad respect for sure. Let's also say hello to Dine, who is going to be one of our uh, Radical Dreamers commentators. How you doing so far? Pretty good. Yourself? Uh, doing all right. So you've been on the sidelines as we've been enjoying this uh, Chrono Trigger. What have you thought? You guys have done an amazing job with commentary just explaining the tricks on point even just making the little jokes it's been a real pleasure to listen to during this whole event well we're looking forward to hearing what you're bringing in for uh, radical dreamers any early thoughts about uh, things for jerry uh the big thing to worry about is um even though we are speed writing a book there's definitely random encounters to worry about uh the skeletons are very, very quick, which is nice. Uh, the scariest enemies are by far the griffins. They start the battle with a, a very loud screech. Um, you do have hit points. So usually after the first instance, you have about 100 hit points. Uh, the griffins' attacks do anywhere between 10 to 30. So if you're not mentally keeping track of your hit points, they're definitely one of the enemies that can just drain you right to zero in one, one battle or get you very close, and then if you end up with a bad RNG and get a next encounter, it's very easy just to have your run kind of end there, then load a safety save. Um, goblins are a bit of a time waste. Uh, the leeches are nice because they like to set themselves on fire, so it's just a minor inconvenience, if anything else. All right, let's uh, pause for a moment here. We've got Halation going in for round two with Lavos Core. Of course, it's on the backup strats. Got Glenn on the left as we're watching. I guess he'd be on the left for the team, too. Brain Dream gonna do its thing. And it looks like Keat actually did have to end up getting the, the backup power tab. Um, it didn't, it seemed like he didn't have enough juice to uh, be able to finish off uh, BT before the fire uh, wiped the party. So he's got to redo the, the boss rush again, unfortunately. And yeah. it looks like GG's on uh, Halation. Yeah. Absolutely. It was a great run. We've seen a great show. G -G. And uh, Team Fleet is still very much in this thing. Uh, well, I want to say something about Kit real quick. Oh. Go ahead. Basically, Keith Scrano's level 19, so he need, he needed that power to. Um, he, he he's on one level short of what he should be. Uh, not sure if that Discord was breaking up for everybody or just me, but basically Jerry giving us the summary that the strength was off, and yeah, we had had someone eagle eye that earlier in chat. So again, chat, thank you so much for your participation, and hope you've all had a great time. And uh, looks like we got Riggs in here now. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Thank you all for the commentary for CT. It was a pleasure to listen to. Well, it was a pleasure to do it. Right. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and hand off to uh, 
Radical Dreamers team. So, Silent, any thoughts for you? Final thoughts for you? Uh, no, I mean, I, honestly, this was amazing. I had a fun time. Again, like, that that blistering fast time by Red. Like, I'm just, I'm in awe. It was just an incredible run. And again, uh, you know, Halation coming in on basically no practice and still busting out a 304 24 is a fantastic time. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, Keats got got a few hiccups, but it, it shows um, that, you know, if you're newer to the run, you can still still play it, still do it. You know, don't let this game intimidate you into not trying out the speed run. It's great. It's a great community. We're all here to help you guys. So, you know, jump in the Discord, ask questions. Almost anybody's going to be around to help. So uh, thanks so much, guys. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of the marathon. And I will finish off by saying it's been a great honor to be a part of this uh, relay. Looking forward to a lot more fun as uh, one of you chat. Thanks, everybody. Have a great time. Give some claps in the chat to the commentators and the runners for Chrono Trigger. They did. They've done an amazing job this first first couple of hours, really, to kick off the event. It's definitely been one of the, the better events that I've been able to be at and listen to. So first and foremost, I'd just like to give a shout out to the whole Chrono community for for taking time uh, and putting on this amazing event. So we don't really, um, so we have three fifths of the Radical Dreamers. Um, thankfully in the last year and a bit, the, the community has grown a lot. We've been doing community races every Tuesday. Um, and a lot of it is just us poking fun at each other to see how many encounters <laughs> the one gets over the other. Cause that's really the deciding factor. Um, like since you're pretty much mashing for an hour like mashing skills doesn't matter that much but the random encounters you can definitely lose anywhere between 20 seconds to almost three minutes yeah i think the longest you can lose to an encounter is uh about three and a half minutes depending on how bad um your goblin fights go a little bit of the backstory, uh, this was made in 1996 for the Super Famicom Satellite View. It was a addition to the Super Famicom, so you, you would pay a monthly fee of whatever, and during a certain time during the day, you could actually download a game off the satellite. Um, so it was a pretty big colossal failure. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of, like, Super Mario 2, uh, but, like, reskinned games, uh, from what I've very briefly Googled about it. So this game was supposed to be a side story to Chrono Trigger, and it was supposed to be the uh, beta for Chrono Cross. Um, and as we can greatly tell, they took a drastic different direction for Chrono Cross. Uh, this game was developed in three months. Um, Which I think is insane with the amount of uh, story that there is. There's so much content. There's actually seven different endings. Um, all of which sound hilarious, but we only run to the uh, first ending of the game. All of, all of the rest of the seven endings are actually basically New Game Plus content, so you have to unlock them as you go. So yep. this is obviously like your text-based RPG. Um, so we have our walking path laid out. So we're, we are Surge, Kid, and Miguel. Surge in this is a traveling uh, musician. Kid is still your typical plunderer, and Miguel is just someone along for the ride. So we're going to be traversing uh, Lynx's castle to try to find the Frozen Flame, which you might recognize from Chrono Cross. Uh, and it's basically Kid trying to get her revenge on Lynx. Along the ways, we will see a couple of familiar faces. Um, there is a couple of Easter eggs. Uh, we will see Princess Riddell, but um, she doesn't look like Princess Riddell. Definitely looking more like Princess Peach. Yes. In this, uh, <laughs> in this particular game. Can you guys hear me properly now? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. We're back. So if you actually go to GameFAQs, GameFAQs has actually some of the, probably the best information uh, for a game, for an unwell-known game like this. Uh, there is a, a very good detailed map. Uh, there's an excellent write-up for the story and walkthroughs and all the different endings. Uh, so as we were mentioning earlier, uh, you do have a hit point system. You do have inventory. 
Um, so you start with 120 hit points. The first battle usually takes 20 hit points off you. And then a lot of it is just a lot of mental gymnastics. You can take anywhere between 8 and 20 damage in a battle, uh, depending on where you get hit. Like, uh, we're watching Jerry right now. He's in the treasure room where you get uh, kind of cornered by a group of goblins. It's one of the uh, two fights that are mandatory in the game. And uh, I think you take 10 damage for when they hit you um, from the front. But if you're on the ground and they smack you in the back with their ball and chain, you take 20 damage. Yep. Uh, that's basically correct. So basically, when we started, I, I did a slower strat with the cats to only take 10 damage instead of 20. So that's put, that puts me at 110. And in the bolt fight, you can take anywhere between 0 and 70. And I took 40. So I'm right now at 70 hit points, which is pretty well. You need to over 50 in order to be able to beat Lynx at the end. Kind of random encounters, you get this dialogue, which is still quite a bit slower. You can find a potion, which heals you for 20 hit points. You can also sometimes find some gems. Uh, this is for the kid affection rate. Um, I think you need a, a high affection or a, a normal affection just to complete the game. Yep, that's correct. See, coming into this as the new Radical Dreamers runner, I didn't know that there's an affection rate for kid. So I'm learning things right now. This there's uh, there's actually some dialogue boxes you can pick where kid will actually hit you and damage you. Uh, when I was picking up yeah. the game, um, I accidentally picked a wrong option and kid smacked me upside the head. Uh, and I ended up dying from it. <laughs> so, so that was a good way to die from friendly fire. <laughs> yep. um, some of the answers are pretty comical. Um, there's one point where we're in a pretty much of a death chamber. And you have the Enheinzer sword, and it's kind of like, do you stick it in the roof or do you stick it in Kid? So you look at over at Kid, and she ends up walloping you in the head. <laughs> She's like, pick a better option. <laughs> yep, and th that not only loses you uh, HP, but also the uh, she doesn't like you as much. So that's what the gems are for. But in this run, we get enough uh, we get enough uh, affection with her in order we don't have to do anything extra for her to like us. We are already likable enough. Are we though? Are we really? To the game, we are. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Perfect. That's all we need. So the world record for this is a 58-48? Yeah, around that. I believe so. Uh, by El Grand Jerry. Um, hey. Rake's got the second sub one hour. Uh, very recently, um, in one of our community races. Just this week, actually, it was a... Uh... 5958. Yep. Um, so it's kind of hard. Uh, we're averaging probably about 75 minutes for this run. Um, that seems to be about the average time from our community races. It, it a lot of this or the whole run greatly depends on how many encounters you get. Yep. Uh, encounters are, are, are out of your control. You can do some save loading to try to skip over some encounters, but depending on what the encounter is and where you saved. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes you just end up wasting more time than it saves. Yeah. And then the encounters, uh, Dine already explained a little bit about how they lose time, but also getting lost is a big thing. Ah, you didn't see it because we were still talking about Chrono Trigger, but I got lost for like a minute and a half at the start. <laughs> <laughs> so that usually happens, but since I kind of know my way through the mansion, uh, I managed to get back into into the area I was supposed to go pretty quick. If you don't know your way, then you're gonna just trigger a lot of random encounters and waste a lot of time trying to get back to where you are. A lot even, of time. Even sometimes trying to figure out where you are is, uh, like even if you have the map, it's a little bit of an issue because everything just kind of looks the same. And mm -hmm. if you're not good at reading like I am, sometimes it just ends up, you end up going the wrong place and you're like, well, here's a six minute cutscene I can't avoid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, some uh, of the rooms, if you enter them at certain times, they give cutscenes we don't want. So we avoid going into the rooms like before time. Because, yeah, as Dain said, you can have long cutscenes that you don't really need. There is a very good safety heal 
Um, in the very beginning, if you go in the clock tower, you'll get the 20 hit points back from the um, the cat fight, which it's not much. Um, it's available until you've done, I believe it's Esmeld. So you do have two free heals in the game. Um, the third one is going to the kitchen for 20 hit points. Uh, besides that, you're pretty much on your own and at the mercy of just drop RNG. Yeah, so uh, if you do take the random encounters, on occasion they will drop potions, and it kind of makes you take them. RD Leaderboard sure some rummers didn't use emulator. Yes, um, Andy and myself use the SD to SNES. Uh, yeah. So we're playing on actual, we're playing on uh, the Super Nintendo just via flash cart. Yep, nobody plays on the satellite view. Uh, I don't think you can anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so, the um, when the community, uh, when Andy and I joined the community, um, there was a translation patch version 1.3, and it didn't allow you to save. Um, so, with a little bit of sneaky googling, we found a uh, the 1.4 patch, and it had the option to save, which really made the community races in this possible. Uh, yeah. Sir. Go ahead, Jerry. Oh, I was just gonna say that before that, uh, Red Slash and myself, we only did one run each, basically, because it without saving, like it was random if we could finish the run or not. So basically, the community was dead until Dyn and Andy came in and introduced uh, introduced us to the patch with uh, 1.4, which allows us to save and make this run possible. Can I just give a big shout out to Keat Ketchum real quick for the uh, hard bot um, fight that he just had? Yep. Um, and we did, we did just uh, switch over to me for Radical Dreamers, so we are all three running Radical Dreamers now. It's not difficult to get on a flash cart. You just put the ROM on an SD card, put it in the flash cart, put it in your console, and you're good to go. Um, the ROM itself works identically. To like any other ROM for the Super Nintendo. However, there was a interesting glitch in the 1.3 fan translation, where if you hit exit game, the ROM actually thought you were trying to leave the satellite view, and it would cause the ROM to crash. Um, so, it, like it obviously, like your run still pooched, but it was an interesting turn of events. Like if you just mistakenly hit the wrong option. Uh, right now, um, if you watch my screen, I'm I'm at Esmel. This goblin's called Esmel. This is the a forced heal we have, and it's a, it's at a really good spot in the run. So, if we didn't have Esmel, we'd probably have to go and take the clock tower heal, which costs like four minutes. But this doesn't actually cost anything since we have to talk to him anyways, and it's pretty much I would consider close to the mid part of the run now. Into four encounters so far. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! So, that dine RNG. Yeah. So there's something you should know. Dine RNG is a real thing. Dine always has the worst encounter luck of all of us. Uh, I would have expected him to have a little bit better for the the relay, but I guess not. And says no. <laughs> no. I'm actually at zero right now. Oh yeah, are you're you, are you just gonna set world record again, Jerry? Yeah, I, I, I got lost, so no. <laughs> oh, and okay. I'm, yeah, and I, I'm I'm actually over saving. I saved like six times now. I'm only up to Esmalt. So there's also a thing that I I like to do a little bit of a different strat. I over save in case I get an encounter, I can reload and skip the encounter. Uh, you know, probably lose some time. If I was gonna get a uh, really good RNG, but overall I, fo I found it to be really consistent for me. So that's what I'm usually doing right now, just saving after every big transition or to just, oh, I got a fight, just reload and go again. I hope, pray that I don't get more fights. Oh, Which uh, fights have you got so far? I've got, uh, was it? Two goblins, poltergeist, and a uh, two goblins, two poltergeist, two goblins, poltergeist, and a skeleton. Ooh. Yeah, those goblins are really nasty. They're over two minutes each. Yeah, those goblins can be a pain in the butt. Yep. That is for sure. 
And I'm almost done with my five minutes of mashing. Nice. This intro, man. So this is the longest route out of all the possible routes, just for the new game. Uh, the the op the to get the other cre uh, endings is actually very very short, at least from what it looks like on paper. Uh, we've been talking about routing all endings, uh, but like everything else, we're really really lazy Yo. and just haven't done anything with it. Uh, but some of the endings do sound quite hilarious. Yeah, uh, there's there's what there's one where you fall asleep and uh, you have a dream that Lynx is actually a space pirate. Yes. And uh, there are space cops that are following him from world to world in order to uh, save the planets from being destroyed. And Lynx is just searching for the frozen flame. Or he has the frozen flame, which he uses as a combustion system for his uh, spaceship. Which Radical that Dreamer. is one that I really want to play through. Radical Dreamers has probably 10 different endings, 11 different endings. The game only really tracks seven of them. Um, one ending has three different endings, like w three different branching endings, I should say. Mm -hmm. Where it's like one of them's like you kill kid, you kiss kid, or you save kid. Um, and they all lead to like a different variation of the same ending. Yeah. So here I'm just in the vault. Uh, we thought we found the frozen flame and it ended up being a cheap forgery. Uh, so this goblin fight can take anywhere between four inputs to seven inputs. Uh, this whole time you're pretty much just mashing A through the fight. You're really monitoring if Surge gets hit square in the back. Uh, as Riggs was saying, that deals 20 damage. Mm -hmm. uh, I so got... it's, uh, you're just at the mercy of RNG right now. I gotta ask, because I dropped for a bit, uh, did we explain the story behind this game? explained a bit of it um okay so yeah basically you're looking for the frozen kids looking for the frozen flame with magical and search uh going basically just tra traversing uh Lynx's castle that's all we're looking for right now and but this game's not like a direct follow to chrono trigger it's not like a sequel or anything it's, i don't know how to explain it's kind of like in a different universe uh between Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross. Doesn't make sense canonically uh, with a lot of the stuff going on. Just a fun little Chrono that, that is just there. Community um, notes, not to bash them, but it was kind of funny. Um, when we started learning them, uh, Andy was learning it because he wanted to run a Chrono Trilogy he did back, um, I think in March. I think it was March. I'm horrible with dates. Um, so he was like, hey, do you want to learn this with me? And I was like, oh, sure, why not? Um, so the first time I died, I was blown away that you could die in this book. <laughs> um, and then I proceeded to die three more times, even before getting to the vault. So I was like, all right, <laughs> all right, game. This is personal now. <laughs> How long did your first playthrough take? Uh, I didn't do a playthrough. Um, I pretty much just grabbed the speedrun notes, tried to decipher them, and then made do with that. Uh, <laughs> but right, like, it, uh, I think my first run ended up being like a 110 after I understood how the notes were laid out because I didn't really want to make my own notes because I was lazy. <laughs> um, Andy did the smart thing. He was going through it. He was reading the lore to chat. Chat was asking me, like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. We're going to die. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> We are a really small community. We're five people. So the three runners you see, Red Stash will already run Chrono Trigger and Andy who's going to run Chrono Cross. Uh, we are doing weekly races on Tuesdays. Tuesdays around 9 p.m. Eastern. If anybody wants to join, you can join the Chrono Discord. Just like exclamation mark Chrono Discord in chat. And it's a fun one hour round just to, you know, just get all into a call and just have a little bit of fun once a week. That's all pretty much it is. Like I never grind this for a PB, but it is nice to put aside like an hour hour and a half and just joke around in voice chat for the, t the whole time it's a lot of fun and you can find the notes on the speedrun page or feel free to uh on discord in the chrono speedrun channel you can you can get at me and i will send you my notes that are uh, 
very laid out. I think Riggs probably has the best set of notes. At least for like a first time runner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I still use Red Sash's very first note. I just I say first, too. second, first. <laughs> <laughs> I just got used to them. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I had to see some dialogue in case I got lost. So yeah. I have like where the dialogue ends and then what mm. choice to make. And uh, I just I just yell at Jerry are. when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> like, Jerry, this I think this is broken. <laughs> it, it doesn't work. <laughs> And he's like, oh, you forgot to go here. And I'm like, no, I didn't. He goes, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what happens. <laughs> uh, so on Jerry's screen, you can see we met up with Princess Peach. I mean, Princess Riddell. I mean, no, that's Peach. Um, <laughs> it, it seems like a very, very weird change. In this game, um, Chrono, or in Chrono Cross, kids are very uh, much like a tomboy. In this game, um, she's very, very, uh, she's much more feminine. Um, when you get to the point uh, with the stone face, like she has like nail polish, um, her nail, uh, was it like a nail file? Yeah. Lipstick, and she gets upset if you end up throwing the lipstick in the mouth, and she ends up punching you. Uh, she, she shows her, she shows her emotions physically. <laughs> uh, but a lot of the dialogue from her is pretty funny. If it's anything, it's worth like killing an hour or two hours for a casual playthrough. The uh, the OST in this game works very well with the uh, Super Nintendo sound chip. Uh, much later, we'll be hearing a track from Chrono Cross, and I I think it holds up very very well with the way the SNES does audio. Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh, the music's actually really great, and yeah, as Dine said, if you do a playthrough, you're gonna you're gonna have a good time. It's just a fun game to play through as well. Kid Kid is really funny. So on my screen, we have the scariest, uh, the counter we were talking about earlier, the griffin. Um, I don't know uh, where we're pulling audio from, but the griffin usually starts with a giant screech. Oh, no. Um, and if you're, and if you kind of just zone out for a second or in the moment of the conversation, you hear the screech, like it generally throws everyone off track. It's, it's terrifying, to say uh, the least. It usually means your run's going to die. <laughs> Don't say that, Brian. No, I say oh, I'm good. Sp- okay. I've been saving all over the place. I got a screen check as well, but I reloaded. So the battles should... are also not very scripted. They're scripted for the fastest possible way, but you can also miss your encounters. Um, so, like, if you can go r- like ram a griffin, and sometimes you'll hit the griffin head on, he'll kick you in the stomach. Sometimes you'll miss him and he'll kick you in the butt. Does being kicked in the butt take more damage? I actually don't know. I haven't looked in Ram Watch for that. I had to reload three times to skip this Griffin, but... Ooh. Yeah, that, that's why I save a lot. I don't like doing the fights, but... <laughs> that's fair. To each their own. I, yeah, I just feel safer this way. The game kind of leads on that, like, Surge is very much learning how to become a war, uh, fighter. Um, they're, like, after the, the, the after battle banter, the kid's always like, I've seen hangovers worse than you. Get up, let's go. <laughs> and, you know, just continue on, continue along your way. Uh, yeah. But, like, there is the small little parts where he's like, hey, I think I'm getting a hand of this, or a hang of this fighting thing, which is always funny to me after about the 14th battle, where it's like, no, you should be a veteran at this point. You shouldn't be missing attacks. <laughs> Why are you taking fourteen battles? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, it just I'm a I'm a completionist at heart. What can I say? Oh, that's fair. Got to see all. Got to see every single. Item. We got to we got to see everything. Yep. If you've been seeing that in screen, you've seen quite a bit of the encounters. <laughs> Only oh, missing true. like the leeches. <laughs> the thing and is, demon, I'm pretty close. Mm-hmm. I gotta go through the fountain, then I can get to the goblin desk. Yeah, for the heal. So Jerry is now at the uh, the torture room, or the torture, yeah, the other torture room, let's call it that, it's easier. Um, you need to find the Enheinzer, the Holy Blade from Chrono Cross. 
Um, and this is where you get the option to like stick it in the roof to stop from getting pierced. Uh, you stick it in the ground or you try to stab kid with it. <laughs> That's the one. Yes. That's definitely the one. Uh, but just as an incentive, there there are always two ways that this can this particular ending can go. Uh, yeah. When you come to Lynx at the end of the game, you can either save Kid or kill Kid, uh, which which is always fun, and it's about an eight minute time difference actually. But you know, when when you're speed running books, eight minutes that's that's a lot of mashing. It's. This game gives you like a very large info dump at the very end. Thankfully, a lot of the ending is just like auto scrolling, mm -hmm. which is kind of good because you get to relax, but it's kind of bad because you just want the timer to end so you can go on with life. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Truth. So yeah. these uh the piranhas in the fountain room I am I'm in. I think they're the only enemies to 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 deal eight damage. Uh, uh, the the poltergeist as well so those two oh never mind then yeah so two enemies but yeah most of them deal as this time was gonna say 10 you know they uh multiples of five like five ten fifteen etc and so the blindfold run of this game no that would be very interesting well, since, since you don't have anything distinguishing when you get an encounter, then I guess it's probably not going to be possible. Like, only the griffin gives you a screech. The rest of the encounters don't let you know. Yeah, plus if you get a skeleton and you're blindfolded and you just mash, uh, you end up, like, throwing the head <laughs> back and forth to the skeleton, and you'll never yep. actually get out of the fight. Yep, and there, there's no there's no audio cue. So, uh, yeah, as Riggs was mentioning, with the skeletons, um, you can either run into them, and their head will hit the floor and the battle's instantly over, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Or they can throw their head back at you, but if you're not paying attention and you're just mindlessly mashing, the option to throw the head back at them is the top one. So you just end up playing this game of catch back and forth for 20 or 30 seconds until you're just like, oh, and then you smash it on the ground and he dies. Um, skeletons, if anything, are the one encounters you want. They're very quick. Uh, they're not threatening at all. Uh, they can't waste time, but that's purely on the, the runner. Yeah. Uh, I think deprived, it was probably you got eaten by piranhas. Yeah, that was definitely piranhas. That's actually how I uh, died my first time. I was trying to get to the end of the room and... Uh, Apparently, you can't actually make it to the exit in that room. You have to turn back and go back to the stairwell, or you just die. Yep. You literally cannot run through the piranha room. So on Jerry's screen, there's another familiar face, um, and I wish I would have remembered the name before I started this sentence. Radius, I think is his name in Chrono Cross. Um, he mentioned something about the Arcadia Knights. Or the Arcadia Dragoons. Um, but the names have changed like Zorkin, Merkel. Um, I'm assuming it's a, like a loose tie-in to Chrono Cross. I just want to say something. Um, if you, when, you're, when you see on my screen that you see all the all the different texts pop up, that's basically when I'm resetting in order to to skip an encounter. Or just as you're gonna see on stream right now, I'm just since I'm using emulator, uh, you can see the the letters where I'm reloading the the ROM basically. So I'm. I'm um, I was trying to skip that fight, but I'm going to take it now. I got a poltergeist. That's one of the faster ones, so I'm just going to take it. First encounter in the room for me. Oh, got we're, all three encounters on the screen. This is a good showcase right now. <laughs> 
We got the demon, poltergeist, and skeleton. Nice. Wow. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the day we all have three griffins on screen. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Perfect. no. Perfect. Those baby blues get me every time. Yeah. Hey, hang on. So a lot of um, a lot of the plot points in this area is sometimes you have to go to a door and you're like, hey, I can't open this door. Hey, let's look somewhere else. But if you just go to the source of where it's sending you, the guy's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. and we're like, hey, there's this weird wooden door we couldn't get into. It smells like death. And he's like, oh, that room. Here's the key. Go have fun. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> smells like death. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> you guys go ahead and uh, go hang out there. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, it looks like slugs or leeches. So you can't really see all the enemies in the first playthrough. Um, we learned this very recently. There's probably like 11 or 12 different enemies in the game. Um, you were, we're guessing you see them on uh, se sequential playthroughs. So the, you have to keep playing after you beat the game the first time. Um, you can't just like turn it off, boot it back up, and enter New Game Plus. The game's not really that smart. Uh, but, like, there's definitely some enemies from Chrono Cross. You'll see, like, man of, uh, there's the Man of Arms. Um, there's the Lamps. So, what you get to see on Rick's screen is somehow you run really, really fast in the tunnel, but you don't go anywhere. It's like, hey, there's this door 10 feet away, but you're running really fast, but the door just stays there. <laughs> it would be great for uh, the leeches fight if when you started running away, uh, that it it legitimately put you in a different place. Start at, Lynx's, start at Lynx's quarter, end up in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and that way you would like act, actually need to know the layout of the of the castle or the mansion versus uh, just, you know, going through and choosing options. Yep. So what you're seeing on my screen right now is the ballroom. Uh, this is like the safe zone of the run. After this, you can't get any more random encounters and only have the links fight left. I say only, but there's still like, you know, 16, 17 minutes left, but... Uh, as a runner, it's like, okay, I got past the RNG, now I can just kind of relax, smash, read the story. We still have to beat that demon circle and links, but uh, if you have high HP, they're not, they're not an issue. So, um, I'm, on, I'm at Esmeld at the moment. As we were saying, he's one of the two full heals, question mark, or does he only add 50? I think it's a full heal. Um, so the other one we talked about was the clock tower. Um, you can go to the kitchen for a 20 hit point heal, and it does explain the uh, the demon circle at the end. Um, but like uh, health is very, very limited in this book. I'm not going to call it a game. I'm going to call it a book. So you, um, it, it does expect you to die or just save a lot and save scum. So it's a lot of mental gymnastics, um, but it's still a, a good playthrough. Uh, the sounds good. The enemy encounters can be a little bit overwhelming, but it does do a good. It does a, a good job at being a branching game. And there's a good amount of lore, so uh, actually taking time to read everything, uh, it really does set you up for Chrono Cross in a way because uh, you do get some backstory. Plus, it, it's just really fun to hang out with your chat and uh, read a book sometimes. Um, I actually do plan on doing uh, a run through of this using different voices. Uh, Surge is going to be Kermit the Frog. Kit will be Miss Piggy. Uh, Magile will be something else. I have it all laid out in my Discord, but uh, it, it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> when are you going to do that? Um, I was supposed to do it last night for my birthday, but life happens and I didn't have enough time to uh, prepare for it. So it'll probably be sometime in the new year. 
if you want to see that, you can follow Riggs. There's the Riggs also runs Chrono Trigger. Not well, but I do. Ah, oh, come on. He <laughs> has a pretty good time. And Dain is the best, the best Final Fantasy VI runner, so you should go follow him as well. Hands down. <laughs> Kermit the Frog here, Wolfie Kubo. Oh, uh, it looks as though it's been sculpted by a far, fine artisan. Mm hmm. <laughs> Would be interested to see if there's anything that grows between like Surge and Kid. Because it, after like a couple of the battle dialogues, it definitely feels like Surge starts to get feelings for Kid, where she's like, all oh, those baby blues get me every time. Yeah, I'm not sure, because you can get that, like, at the very beginning of the run, if you just get an encounter right as you enter into the mansion. I've, I've had that as an ending. Yeah. Just to the first fight. So if you watch my screen and you can see it's like all blinking and everything, this is the, the devil circle that we are. Or magic circle. <laughs> I don't know, magic devil I think circle. It's the devil I circle. It's devil the circle, devil. yeah. Basically, uh, the options to get out of it are always the same, but the, the pattern changes. The pattern of where the options are to select, which is it's lucky because funny story, when I first ran this game, we all, we had it only marked as 442, so I would only select the 442 options, and after I died a few times, we realized that the options moved around. Yeah, a lot of my beginning runs died here really good, and I didn't know why. I, I would just message Jerry and be like, I followed your notes and I died. Why? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hmm. He goes, oh, look, they can change. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one that made me double check. <laughs> It's funny because I wrote down all of your options for it, uh, from the world record to base my notes on. And uh, I got to the demon's gates and everything was in the wrong place. And I was like, wait, no, no, this, is, this isn't what it says. Do these move? So I, I save stated um, on another run and came back to it over and over again. And uh, yeah, just to figure it out for myself. Mm -hmm. Radius is kind of just locked up in jail and he doesn't know what he wants to do with himself. So we're like, we should help him out. And it's just like, uh, no, we should just leave him here. Uh, so then we're going to go off a little bit more adventuring. We're going to go back to the clock tower to find the enhancer. And as Kid is a good companion, she's like, I'm not carrying this. Slave boy, come here. She <laughs> hugs it to Surge and Surge ends up lugging it around for a bit. So you can see in my screen, I just entered the final door. That's you're gonna see Links in Links's quarter in a bit. After you enter Links's quarter, there's like 11 minutes left, and you're gonna have the Links fight. And there's there's a couple cutscenes that are really nice. You can, and you 